going on, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, I believe the last episode you just saw was the Tommy Doyle one. Big props to him. Thank you so much, Linkmon, for coming on. So today, I am very excited to have a very special guest. He is one of the more well-known names from my state, Connecticut. He's an all-state baseball player, current baseball player at, would you like to tell me where you're playing uh, at? Delphi University. At Delphi University. He is a former high school classmate of mine. We graduated class of 2018, Cooper Johnson. How are you doing, kid? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, so this is a really, um, like I, like I truly thank <clears throat> you for coming on because I think a lot of people, if this was going on three years ago, people would say, no way this, this would happen. And I think people would still think about this to this day because whether people love you or hate you, people know Cooper Johnson is quite the character. But I personally wanted to have you on not just because you're a well-known name, but I genuinely think that you are a person who has, just like me, just like any other common person, has gone through their own shit, and they have bounced back and come back from setbacks, whether personal, whether it's from other people. I mean, we, we had that talk the other day um, at the uh, the turf field. Yeah, me, and, me and Cooper were. I was watching him and uh, another baseball player that he played with get some throws in. He's got the, him and his boy, my boy Joey, they got an arm. How far <laughs> can you throw? Uh, I don't know. Hard to tell, but we were just throwing 100 yards. What uh, position do you play? So I'm a, I am play center field. Center field? Yeah. What made you get into center field? Were you always playing center field nah, since you were so, a kid? Actually, it's a funny story. The real reason I play center field is uh, back in Little League, I got hit in the face like four times. Yeah. And I just was, became scared of the ball. Really? So I just moved to the outfield, and uh, like just with my speed and my athleticism, it just it kind of transitioned to be a good position for me. Really? Yeah, definitely. When I was playing... So the real, I quit baseball in middle school in like fifth grade. And the reason I quit was because I got hit by the same pitcher twice in one game. And I just thought the game that I once loved betrayed me. And I never played baseball again. Never picked up a bat again. Never put, like, put on the belt, strapped it up again. And I really love baseball. I know there's the whole debate as to whether baseball is boring or Definitely it's a really not. fun sport. Yeah, uh, You want to defend yeah, baseball? Yeah, so I mean... Baseball is a mental game, so it's one of those games where you're built to fail. So if you really look at it in the major leagues, the best headers in the major leagues fail 7 out of 10 times. The best batting averages in the major leagues are 300. So that means you're getting hit 3 out of 10 times. So if you really think about it, you're su- you're failing more than you succeed. So uh, when that happens, it's a tough game. you got to be mentally strong. But if you're really in the game and you understand the game, it's a fast-paced game. It's a mental game. you got to think before you do things. you got to know where the play's happening, the different elements of the game, um, concentration, and it's just a tough game. It's a really tough game because if you really think about it, you're hitting a you're hitting a round ball coming at you very hard yeah. with a round bat. What's so, harder, hitting a 100-mile-per-hour fastball or hitting a half-court shot? Oh, hitting a 100-mile-per-hour <laughs> fastball, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> Why? Luck isn't going to hit you a 100-mile-per-hour <laughs> yeah. fastball. Yeah, no, I literally saw Freddie Freeman. He's a, uh, He just won the World Series. First baseman, right, for the, for the Atlanta Braves. The Atlanta correct. Braves, yeah. and he... Literally got asked that question, I think, during the World Series, like right before game one. And he literally just smiled and like, like and knew it was a dumb question. He said, yeah, that's, you, you can't hit a 100 mile that's not, a, that's not even like, to me, that's and, not a question. Yeah. I play the show a lot. I know you do too. Yeah. And I swear to God, when I hit a 100 mile per it's the best feeling. I swear to God. When I just, if I ding it. You want to tell people what your favorite baseball team is? Yeah. So, um, as you can see, the lights up here. Um, yeah. Blue and orange. I'm a New York Mets fan. Yeah. So, um. Big New York Mets fan. How did that happen? So uh, my grandfather, um, he's a Hall of Fame scout with the New York Mets. He retired in 2015 after uh, after the Mets went to the World Series and actually lost to the Kansas City Royals. Um, That's crazy. So my grandfather was a scout with them for, I think, 33 years, uh, scouting director in the late 80s, early 90s. And then uh, he worked with them forever, and then he's uh, in the Baseball Hall of Fame for scouts. Yeah. And then uh, my dad got drafted by them. Uh, after college, after he played four years at Union College, yeah, that's uh, he actually got drafted insane. by the Mets. So it's just kind of, it's kind of groomed into my blood. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, I just became a Mets fan ever since. Die hard, for sure. Who's your favorite player right now? Who right now? I mean, it's got to be Francisco Lindor. He's that's, a dog. That's my. That's Not nah, dude, guy. like he's he's a dog. I've, I mean, I, that's I def- that's definitely my guy for sure. But growing up for me, it was 
me and my brother always had the thing. He was, my brother was number five. I was number seven. I'm still number seven to this day. No. And it was Jose Reyes and David Wright. So mm. it was like David Wright was my brother's guy, and I I got a big fat head still in my room. With really? Him. And then uh, Jose Reyes was like my favorite player growing up, so I still wear number seven to this day because yeah, of him. I, yeah, I got a couple fat heads in my room. I got Shea Gilgis, Alexander, and the Thunder, and I have A.J. Green. Both dogs. Yeah, AJ Green's your boy. Yeah, and AJ Green, uh, probably the greatest. I mean, as much as I love Ocho Cinco, I think he's probably the greatest Bengals receiver, pure, not numbers wise, just talent wise. And then, I I never had what now. I almost got a Shaq fathead when he was on the Celtics. I don't even know how that's possible. And yeah, my dumbass. Yeah, everyone listened to this. So when I was I was a kid. I thought Shaq. So I never knew. I never paid attention to the NBA. So I thought Shaq's prime was when he was on the Celtics. Oh, man. And he only played like 30 games for them. Oh, man. No, and I saw him retire. So when I saw Shaq retire, I was like, oh, like he must have been a legend in Boston. Dude was wearing a freaking mouthpiece and was freaking <laughs> getting hurt every series up and down the court. But, no, yeah, I think for those who know me, I mean, I would always bash baseball and say that's a boring-ass sport. Um, yeah, I kind of trashed baseball for the last few years. And then once I got the show... It's a it's the MLB video game. It's like the equivalent to 2K, sort of. And I think it's better than 2K. And I think it's better than Madden. I honestly think it's the best <laughs> sports game. Now nah, I'm saying it right now. Yeah, a- Abel's right over here trying to defend 2K. 2K sucks, okay? I'm never... I mean, I took a... I've been playing 2K since... I want to say freshman year of high school. Maybe 8th grade. And I took my first hiatus. I'm currently retired out of the game since starting... What is this, 2K22? God... And who's that on the cover? Luca? It's, uh, yeah, it's Luca. It's Luca, right? It's yeah. Man. So, yeah, I was a 2K sweat. No, but the show, I would say, is probably the best sports game I've ever played. See, I mean that. See, it's so good. That's the that's the thing now is that I think now that baseball, like, for a while, and I, and I like, not that I agree with you, but, like, I low-key didn't watch baseball as much for a couple of years because it just got a little boring to me. Really? Like, just watching the game. Never, it was never playing. It was more just watching a little bit. But... Then, like, the game's kind of changing into you got all the guys, the yeah. bad flips, the home runs. Yeah. Everybody's throwing 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Like, you got guys like Shohei Otani, like, he throws 100 off the he throws 100 off the mound, hits 450 you, foot home Do you runs. think he's made baseball, like, himself relevant again? Um, I think it's became relevant before he came into the league, but I think he's definitely one of the leading charges for why it's like. Dude, he's so sick. It, I mean. I mean, you got you got guys like you got guys like Kevin Durant, LeBron James, all these guys going out to go see. They're going out to go see Shohei play. They're, yeah, you know what I mean. Like Kevin Durant and some of the Nets players were. I think it was Durant, Harden, and Kyrie or something. They all went to the Yankee Stadium, sit behind home plate to, just to watch yeah. Shohei play. Like, and it's stuff like it's stuff like that where it's like people are starting to pay attention to the game now. Right. People are playing the show, like the video games. Right. And like even at my school, we have um our soccer team at my school has a lot of international guys, and they. They don't know. They don't really know anything about baseball. The guys over in Europe, and yeah. they started to watch our games, and they really liked it. Got into it, started going to Mets, Yankees games, and stuff like that. And they always tell us all the time how, like, they really like baseball, even though they don't understand it as well. But what is your um? You never got hurt this year, right? Playing. No, I haven't been. I haven't been hurt since high school. Yeah, yeah. So for the injury that he's talking about, when we played football together our senior year, Cooper tore his ACL on what a kickoff return, right? Yep, Farmington first yeah. play of the game. What does that feel like? To to tear an ACL, at least for you. I mean, I know Abel has. You can ask Abel. Me and him were back to back games. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. You it were. It was. It was. Wait, who was the other Com- one? Kamansky. Com- yeah, he tore he tore his ACL yeah. first. Yeah. Then me, second game. Kamansky's third game. Wow. So like, that was that was terrible. Like that was actually terrible. So I remember this. It was a, uh, it was a kickoff return against uh, Farmington. First play of the game. I, bu- I broke like a couple tackles to the middle yep. and then I broke to the outside yeah. and there was a couple guys like coming from the far side of the field from the left side we were on the right side and I made a quick cut in the turf and the turf has no no give at all yeah. so my foot got stuck in the turf my knee went over and I just felt like a snap in my knee Jesus. and I just dropped and then I got lit up after like yeah. there was like five guys and then I couldn't get up so like I was like yeah. all right like I tried to get Coach Pace to come over here and like yeah. they got me on the cart or whatever. I got I went back over to the other side and then I was like all right yeah I think I'm good like and I went to get down and I stood on my right leg and that shit was just like oh like, like it was this. like a macaroni it just was like wobbly and I oh fell. And I was like Is that yeah. how far for you yeah. I was oh. like I was like I do not think I'm gonna oh my play God. I was like I don't think I'm gonna play oh my God. 
like I it was the first drive I went in and it was like I told my ACL whatever. Yeah. Because I was like chasing some guy. And then I couldn't stand up and Keenan like helped me up. I went in to the next play. Wow. And I played through it. But I think the third play I couldn't stand up. I was in that position. Like, yeah, I I couldn't stand, imagine that. Couldn't That's stand brutal. Up. I mean, the inter- I mean, it's even crazier now, though. Hold on, do me a favor. Like, you've been good this whole time. Just, like, raise it a little bit closer towards you. But, yeah, I, um, I freaking, the only crazy injury I've ever had was when I played rugby senior year of high school. And I thought it was pretty decent for a first-year player, but we went against Southington. That's a very great sports. They got a freshman year, they, right? Huh? That was freshman year? Senior year for me. I played rugby senior year. Oh, ru- oh you're talking about rugby. rugby. Yeah, okay. and Southington has a great sports program, I would say. Or like, what is it called? Uh, athletic program where they got – they got a, the football team's still really good, right? Where? Southington. Oh, Southington, I mean, I'm sure. They're yeah, always... I mean, it's – yeah. No, like, we, we played them, and they had probably – I can't remember how many people lined up on a rugby field, but they probably had what it felt like 10 guys who were like 6'4", 300-plus pounds – and you've got to tackle. It's like kill rugby in, in a nutshell. It's like kill the carrier for like yeah. ninety straight minutes. Like it's ridiculous. You guys are crazy. Yeah. No. no and I, my very first tackle, I went in and tackled this absolutely unit of a man. Like I, I say, man. Like the, the I don't know what they're feeding those kids. I just don't understand why some kids our age look like grown ass men. But I tackled them, and then they dog piled on top of me, and my I felt like a crunch in my shoulder, and then I was out. Like I just laid there, and then I um. I went to like the walk in literally right after that and all of a sudden I um I I found out I had like a sprained shoulder or something. It kinda bothered me for the next few months. Like I, I was in a cast for like a day. And I didn't even need it just so I didn't want to like stiffen up my shoulder. But sports injuries are rough. And if I'm being honest with you, like straight up honest, when you went down, if I'm being completely real with you, and I feel like some people may share the same sentiments, like I'm just being straight up. At the time, I don't wanna say good. Because that's fucked up to say, like, really fucked up. But I kind of saw that as karma. That's just me personally. Because it was not just you. There was a bunch of people who we had in the locker room at the time. So let me break down our football program for those who are listening, watching, whatever, in a nutshell. We had so many characters. A lot of, a lot of characters. And the one problem I would say is no disrespect to anybody that we played with. Um, we just never got on the same page. I remember senior year. Remember we went to camp. What was it? No, camp the, the in the woods. Oh, camp Beckett. Beckett yeah. Went to camp Beckett, and that one night where we all got around the campfire, or whatever. We we had like one of those like team bonding things, and we all got around the campfire, and we we all talked about how, um. You know, we got to do this for the season. We got to do this. We got to do that. That was the one time where I felt like everyone was saying we need this now. Like, we need to get our shit together. But at that point, it was too late. If you honest, if if I'm just being real. I mean, obviously, once it's 0-0 before the season or anything, like, anything can happen. Anything goes. And for the most part, other than when we played South Windsor and maybe one more team that I'm not thinking of. We were in every game at halftime. Yeah. Do you know who else we were in against? I mean, I, I don't I remember. Mean, I know South Windsor, I, I'm going to be honest. I started both sides for the first time, offensive, defense. Uh, bro, I got we, my shit rocked. I sucked. We just like <laughs> we just lost everybody that year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then we also had some injuries too, which doesn't help. But I remember um, since freshman year, I mean, I'm not going to name drop any people, but we had a lot of characters. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I don't wish any ill will or any... You know, like, I have no anger towards anybody we played with, towards anybody that I went to school with. I mean, I wish everybody nothing but the best. I mean, you know, you're, you, you're in freaking doing college baseball. Abel goes to a very well, well-known college, very successful college. Me, I'm in college. I took a fucking gap year. Um, and I know there's a lot of people doing their own thing, and I hope everyone's doing well. I mean, but yeah, going back what do you to think? I think that losing mentality. Yeah, that doesn't help. What that doesn't I help. Whatever. That's we that, yeah. That's that was, it was all, we we pointed a lot of fingers. No, we did. I think it was the coach to start with. Oh, the original coach. The original coach. Yeah. No. We. Really yeah. No. Nah, I don't even care if he listens. Like I don't. Our old coach, Coach Hennessy. He, for everyone that played football with us, for anyone that you know was in our town, like he wasn't a good coach. He was a bully. He wasn't a coach. He was a bully. If I'm being honest. Um. Yeah. And. 
I just didn't understand lots of his play calls at the time. He showed, he showed a lot of favoritism. No, nah, he, yeah, he did show favoritism. But you know what? That's actually a sad part or the sad reality or sad truth when it comes to sports. Like, if you're a well-known name in town, if you're a well-known name um, on the roster, like, and especially if a new coach is coming in, like, you're going to play. Like, that's how it is. There are people, there's some people like, dude, I was not a favorite whatsoever, but the only reason I played was because I just worked my ass off, too. That was the only reason. It's not like I was talented. Like, I, if I'm being honest, the only sport I think I might have the body for is fucking esports. <laughs> nah, like, I, not nah, like, I'm just being real. Like, I, I uh, like I, I'm not fucking six seven, one ninety with a fucking three point strap. I don't got handle. I'm not gonna play baseball. I mean basketball, fucking baseball. I can't see those fucking pitches. I'd swing at everything. I'd swing at the fucking dirt. Fucking soccer. I don't. I have like negative five star skill moves. What else is there? Tennis. Now that I want to get into, I would love to play fucking tennis. I would say this: if I didn't play football in high school, I would have played tennis. I'm just being real with I you. I can't play tennis. I would have had. I would have had the headband and the fucking. I'm just being real. I don't care what anybody said. I was tired of fucking waking up at 5 a.m. going to lifts. And, and, to, and I think people don't understand that. The whole, um, when you play football, like, there's no off season. Like, nah. like, like other than senior year, the other half, and even then you played. No, you didn't because you were hurt. I only played but, one game yeah, yeah. and one play. Yeah, but you know what I mean, though. Like, once baseball, baseball, once uh, football is over, there's no like you maybe get a week off and then it's back to lifting and everything after school yeah. like i i never got to know what it was like other than my very last year to know what it was like to go home directly after school to have time to do all your homework like right after like we had to cram it all in as soon as we got home at like 5 6 p.m but even by then you're just really fucking tired and shit but yeah dude i seriously you you being here i think um it means a lot to me whether you realize it or not I know it means a lot to Abel. It means a lot to a lot of people who genuinely thought you was a certain way compared to another. And we, you know, we've we've talked about it. Like you know, you you could say whatever it is you want to say, but I think a lot of people think you know Cooper Johnson, you know, the big scary Cooper. But it, but in general, like if you get to, someone gets to know you, like you're a straight up dude. Like you're a class. I, I'm being honest. You're a class act. If you let someone get to know you, or if um. You know, vice versa. <clears throat> yeah, no, I mean, I mean, definitely, yeah. I, I mean, you could use a plenty of different words um, yeah. for how I used to act. Yeah. Not even, not even how I used to act. It was just like more of like I had my circle of people that I showed love to, and then it was like I just kind of not ignore, but like I just maybe just didn't go off the same amount of love to like everybody around me when I could have. You know what right. I mean? So it's like. Some people can say that, uh, like, I'm an asshole or, yeah. like, a whole bunch of different other things. But, I mean, I think I could speak for I can speak for the people that I'm around, uh, my teammates up at school, all my other friends. And, um, I mean, I'm sure you could speak for others that yeah. if you really get to know me, you know that, like, I'm really, like, I'm a genuine dude. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm very, like, I'm very truthful. So I'm, so I'm one of those people where I'm an open book, like, um... And some people didn't like that, like, yeah. and that I think that's that's one of the things that people didn't like is people didn't like the fact that if I felt a certain way about something, then I would like say that and I would speak up and say something about it. Yeah. Or this is how I feel about a certain situation that others wouldn't speak up about, or others would sit down and kind of just be quiet about. And I think that's where I got myself in trouble. Was my mouth used to get myself in trouble? Right. And it was more of like. I never had a filter. I never watched what I said. Yeah. And I think if I did that, the different perceptions of what people think about me would be a lot different yeah but i mean i definitely like if you can get to know me and i like i'm one of those people where i'll really do anything for anybody yeah. um i show i show a lot of care and yeah. i want to help people that are um that need something or even just help people that even if they don't need something just give them a little extra help like make it a little easier and just stuff like that and even like even when you re when you reached out to me to do this, it was just like it wasn't even it was a no brainer. It's just like yeah. yeah, sure, bro, of course. Like yeah. you want me to you want me to hop on your podcast, you want me to do something. I mean, I told you already, uh over at Clem when we were over over there the other day. I was That's like, our turf field in town. Yeah. And um I told you the other day, I was like, I really like your podcast. I've watched multiple yeah. of your episodes. I told you I watched uh, I watched Tyler's. Yeah. I mean obviously you didn't have any uh video for that one, but yeah. I watched Tyler's, I watched Jared's, um I watched I watched a bunch of them. Yeah. And I watched Eric's. Yeah. Um, so it's like 
it, it's it's a good thing that you're doing what you're doing. And I was telling you before that, yeah. Like you were one of those guys where me and you were kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, meaning that like I was very like outgoing, like yeah, I didn't really care what other people thought about me, and whether or not that bit me in the ass later, yeah, like, I I never really cared what people thought about me. I was always gonna be me, right? And, um, you were one of those people where it was like you were like trying to figure out who you were at the time and yeah. like just trying to like. Now, I don't want to say try to fit in because you never tried to, like, fit in because you were always you. Yeah. Like, you were just kind of, like, sometimes around other people scared to be you. And that's why, like, right. for me, it's, like, it makes me pretty happy to see that, like, you're over here doing something that you really love. Yeah. And, uh, like, being able to do this and show the town of Newington who you really are, the state, and even show yourself because that's more important. Yeah. Because what's really important is proving to yourself that you are who you are. And that's it. That's the only person you got to prove yourself to. But, like, I could definitely commend you for for doing this and like opening up out of your shell and just yeah. being able to just be you, be Mario and like being able to get these different people on. Right. And uh not to name drop, but Mario's gonna be having some special guests pretty soon. Yeah. Um he's got some stuff cooking up, definitely. Um he's been telling me. So you guys should definitely stay tuned. Um but I I definitely could commend you, bro. I, I think it's great that you're doing what you're doing and find something that you're really passionate about. And I think you're gonna I think you can go pretty far. And I, I like I told you, I don't I'm not one of those people that I'm not a big podcast person. I don't yeah. I don't watch a lot of podcasts. Sometimes I watch like Drink Champs and Joe Rogan right. here, here and there, but I'm not a big podcast person. But one thing is like every time you post on Instagram, I'm always watching your I'm always yeah. watching your videos yeah. and then it's like I want to show love to people that I went to high school with cuz obviously if you can make it, that makes all of us proud and right. makes everybody else look good in the town and state of Connecticut and stuff like that. But no, I definitely think that's a good thing that you're doing. Yeah, I really appreciate that. And I what you just said about the whole when you represent Connecticut, because Connecticut, I mean, people know Connecticut, but it's right, I mean, in the New England area, I mean, you got New York City and Boston right there, so, like, we're kind of right under the radar, I mean, like, you'll hear Connecticut be name drop sometimes on, like, TV shows or whatever, but, like, you know it's there, but it's not anything crazy, so when you see a person, like, let me shout out uh, Eddie Cruz real quick, he was just in a freaking, uh, I forget the motto of the Connecticut Logan, um, Logan, slogan, and he, um, he was like the star of the the freaking commercial. Yeah, yeah try I try to find that. You I saw did that, see that. He was dude. That was sick. And he was doing the like the one of those like poem rap poems mm -hmm. in the background. Like you hear him kind of talking about what Connecticut stands for. And then the end, he does that sick ass pose, like Megan Rapinoe, like looking at the sky. Like that was so cool. And yeah, that, I definitely and, saw that. And and you saw and you genuinely see how people rallied around him so, and showed showed that love, which is so sick. And I know. It's just, I really, see, when stuff like that happens, I genuinely love this, this state, but I feel like there's just so much, I mean, maybe it must be our grade, there might be something I'm missing here, there must have been, like, a gap, and I talk about this all the time with people, like, there must have been some sort of, something changed, which kind of made everyone so robotic and toxic towards one another, I mean, that's just from what I've noticed, and at the same time, so you talked about the parallels or the differences between me and you and the whole, you know, you didn't care what people thought. And I did. Like, I was definitely very anxious. But someone like you, you you parted. You went to places in high school. Like, you did certain uh, things like that. Like, me, I just, I stayed home. Like, I never, never party, never did anything. And, and that's the normal high school life. I mean, stereotypical high school. Like, you party, you experiment, you try things. Me, I was very reserved, very sheltered. And you see these people get together in these settings and have fun or whatever, and then whenever those settings aren't happening, all you hear is just, you know, dissing people behind, you know, behind each other's backs and stuff like that, which is, like, a really, like, it's just, there's just so much to it. Like, I can't even, for those who are, like, listening, or I, I can't explain it. The, where I'm from, like, my town, great place to live in, great place to raise a child. I just think it's genuinely just the people we graduated with, just the people who are, like, in our class a year above it might not not necessarily be the case for everybody but i think that hate gets more attention than positive you know like like positivity positive so, yeah so you know me personally whenever i go to school i would just be miserable i would just be like all right who's gonna be the next person to call me this call me that what am i gonna have to deal with today you know shit like that i mean I'm so glad that, like you said, like I genuinely feel like I did sort of find myself. I mean, I think we're all trying to find ourselves yeah, at the end sure, of the day. I, I, yeah, <clears throat> I mean, the way I see it is what changed with me, and I was talking about this with a coworker of mine the other day. If you can, so this this goes into the whole what is happiness, because I think that's what everyone's trying to chase. This whole 
stigma of I'm living a like the picture perfect world or I'm happy. Okay, first of all, and I think maybe you can attest to this. I think a lot of people nowadays, I say this all the time, and I will never stop saying it. I think people treat their Instagram like Tinder nowadays. I think they do. I think lots of people like to show nothing but the best of them. And and it kind of makes them look like the perfect picture perfect image like this girl she posts nothing but the best looking photos of herself so she looks hot so all the guys want to slide under dms maybe that's not true maybe she's just being herself and hey like good for you like seriously or this other guy maybe he wants he's just posting nothing but pictures of him uh, pictures of him at a party with with his guy with his you know his bros family members where he looks like a role model citizen and then behind the scenes everyone thinks he's an absolute douchebag or even not better but another scenario is Everyone posts these photos to kind of buy into this thing that their life isn't what that is. That they want to get away from whatever shit they're dealing with. Which is really sad. But do you know people like that? Like, Do you, so, do you know what I mean when I say that? Like, what do you think? Alright, so my personal opinion is like... Um, I think social media is... Uh, social media is like a way for people to like kind of post um, like the good things in their life. Or like to brag about... Not in, in, When I say brag, I don't mean that they're being cocky or i don't right. mean they're they're meaning any malicious intentions but it's more yeah. of like it's like oh like i'm in hawaii or i'm at this dinner restaurant or right. i'm at this landmark or i'm in new york city or i'm at this club and yeah. it's not they're not bragging to like make people feel bad but it's like they're just kind of showing off what they're doing yeah and it's not it's not that they have any bad intentions at all but it's more of just a thing of like i think social media's gotten to the point where there people are posting things just to make themselves look good and kind of elevate yeah. above others. Yeah. So my thing is you, you can never judge a book by its cover. And I always live, but I always live by that. Like yeah. every person I meet, I don't judge them based on how they look or yeah. how I perceive them or what I've heard because right. until I perceive that for myself, there's no reason for me to think that way. So it's one of those things where on Instagram, it's like you could see, you could see so-and-so with, pictures of foreign cars and yeah. Louis Vuitton this and Fendi that and Jordans and right. all the all the brand new stuff and going to New York City and all that like he could have a thousand likes whatever it yeah. doesn't matter right. that don't that don't mean he's not right. dealing with something besides that or he's not posting that for a reason that like people don't understand that so it's like to go with that idea yeah. we were talking about this at the turf field the other yeah. day yep. um, people like people tend to People tend to see an image and not, and just like make assumptions about an image. Yeah. So people tend to see someone Very as true. being at the top or someone who's at this point in their life to be like, oh, his life's perfect. Nothing wrong with him. Yep. He don't go through anything. Yeah. My life sucks. I struggle with this. I struggle with that. Why can't I be this person? Right. And me and you were just talking about this the other day. And you were like, I remember you asked me the question. You were like, why, why is it that, or what, what is it like? being on top yeah. and having to like like maintain that Be, like, being level. being the popular like kid. like but it's more weird but then we yeah. like went into right. detail a little yeah, bit yeah. and it was yep. like it was like what is it like to like being able to stay on top instead of working to get to that position yeah. and what i was trying yeah. to tell you is yep. honestly honestly it, it kind of sucks like it, it really does the yeah. the like of course the achievements and the compliments and the love and everything else that's that's all cool but half the time that all that shit's fake to be honest, half that shit's fake. Yeah. Because we were just talking about it. it. Was like when I was when I was all state and I was I was uh, playing football sophomore junior year, like before I got hurt senior year and basketball. I think I was at your thing when and, you signed. Yeah. For, to, no. Yeah. You yeah, were. You yeah. were in the and library. Being yeah. a part of just just being a part of um, just being a part of like teams that were well known. It right. was like my sophomore year. I was lucky to be a part of a basketball team that went to the semi state semifinal. Like, so gross. They were so good. Like we were we were so like we were a very good team. Practices were fun. Like it was just everything about that was fun. Right. And it was just like having a great baseball season like I did, gaining a bunch of offers and stuff like that and being able to commit to a college. Um like that was great. And it was like when I was at the top it was like the love was crazy. Everybody yeah. showing love. People texting me, people on my Instagram people this that and the next right you know what i mean and even like my signing day on my signing day when i signed to go to adelphi yeah uh we had a signing day at the library and the love was crazy yeah all you guys showed up i know you were there you were you yeah. both were there that's all my cool. boys all my boys from school were there yeah. I mean, coach wenzel came there coach alimo was there yeah. all the the football coach pace came coach right. pace literally can't like literally set back practice an hour yeah. just to have the whole team yeah. come to what like that was that was great like, yeah the love was crazy. I have my family there, and right. uh, Tigno's there, and Mr. Myers, and all the 
all those guys, everybody's there. So it's great. And it's just like, if you look at it now, it's like not to be, not to be fucked up or call anybody out. Cause I don't, right. I know nobody's showing hate, right. but it's like, you look at my phone right now, how many of those people that were, how many of those people that were there at that thing, you feel me like that? Yeah. Nobody, nobody's tra- like, nobody's checking up. No one's texting me. No one's, you know what I mean? Like, no, like that love is there when you're at the top. And that's where me and you, uh, started talking about it. And it was like, when you're at that point, and then obviously I was at that point, I was going to my senior year and yeah. in my mind, my goals were, let's go all conference in football. Let's go all conference in basketball. Let's go all state again in baseball. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like these are my goals for right. athletics. Like these are my goals, obviously on top of being great teams and trying to contribute to being great. And I just think that having all those goals and then obviously my second game of the season in football, when I was already committed, I probably shouldn't have been playing football, but I would have, yeah. I would have regretted it if I didn't. Did your, did you have your parents tell you to be careful or anything? No. I mean, yeah, my dad definitely was like yeah. a little worried about it. And after, after I got here, he was more worried something about Gunner playing his senior year. Did you have more people supporting you to play they, or like not? To? It was more of more people telling me that I should do what I want to do. Okay. And there was no doubt in my mind that I was going to play. Like yeah. there was no, there was yeah. no, I mean, obviously I don't want to leave you guys out to dry, obviously, because I mean, I started my freshman year, you guys, and I was supposed to be a big, like a a big part of the team. Not when I'm not the best player, but at least we went out on top. That's a you good know what thing. I mean. I, and yeah. and I'm supposed to I'm supposed to help you guys out, so I'm not leaving you guys out to dry. So of right. course I want to play. And this is my this is my high school. Like in high school, it's like what's important is what's on your chest. It's like you represent Newington. You want to win. Like like you want to have these rights when you see people out and like you want to be the one to be like, oh, we beat you all Like we beat you all Like yeah. we did this. We did yeah. that. Yeah. So of course you're playing for Newington, and it's just like one of those things where when you go to college, you're playing for Newington, but without Newington on your chest, you're playing for the whole eight six zero CT Newington, but you're yep. playing that shit without that shit on your chest. But to go back to what I was saying, it's like when I was at that point, yeah, uh, my second game of the season, I get hurt, and then to go to the doctor and find out that all right, your uh, senior year basketball season's over, my basketball career is done, never played a basketball game after that, yeah. Um, and honestly, I'm grateful that I ended my basketball career when Wenzel um, was at Newington because he left after my junior year. So I'm very grateful that I finished my career at least with him. Um, but I just it was just one of those things where I lost my senior basketball season. They were telling me it wasn't likely that I was going to play baseball my senior year. So it's like I'm going through all these emotions, and yeah. I don't know how to feel because like all these all these like goals and achievements that I had was just crushed. Everything was crushed. Yeah. And my life just sucked. Like I was in a, like I was in a, like you saw, I was at the yeah. games in a wheelchair. Like, yeah. like bro, like I went from being an athlete on the field that now I can't even walk. Like, like it sounds funny, can't even wipe my own ass. Yeah, like, yeah everyone like, says that, right? What like, is it? Like, yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. yeah I, but it's like it's I'm, str- I'm yeah. struggling like, yeah. to like even like bend down or like right. put on like my That's pants crazy. or take a shower. Like, yeah. I gotta hop around in the shower. Like, it sucks. Like yeah. this shit sucks. You're just like That's crazy. you go from fully enabled to like you're just not right. You could do whatever you want, and then you just can't. And it's just like... Especially as senior nights. Yeah. And then it just... Sucks. Yeah. And it was just like senior... It's just like all season, like, I'm happy for all you guys. And I was... Of course, I was happy for all you guys. It's like all season, I want to be out there with you guys. And I know, I, like... And I'm actually very grateful that Gunner actually stepped into my position to play safety. My younger brother stepped in and yeah. took my position. So it, it was good for him. It made it, like, a good transition for him. But still, like, I'd love to see you guys play and wanted you guys to win. But it was just sucked because I couldn't be out on the field, like, right. as much as I wanted to. And... It's just like when you get to those, that position, you just don't know what to do with your life. And it's just like I'm sitting at home in pain all day. Like I got people checking up on me all day. Like, of course, like um, I had like obviously my boys and stuff like like my boys would always come over before practice or after practice, come check up on me. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I, uh, like my family would always come over. Even some teachers would come by and just make sure that I'm all right. Like before I could go to school and stuff like that. But it sucked. I'm walking around. I'm walking around on crutches. Like, yeah. And um I just got into this place where it's just like I'm sitting alone all the time, like just in the dark, just starting to get to this place where it's like, fuck, like I don't know. So I get to this really dark place, and this was the first, like the beginning of my like roll down, my like my turmoil. That's when I just like I was at the top and I just started to just go down, just kept going, kept going, kept going. Before we get into more of what you're saying, yeah, I think the thing that's tough with ACL injuries is that we're not world-class athletes and you see them they'll come back i don't know if you just saw cam Akers of the rams he just tore his achilles five months ago and he just he's on the 21 activation yeah, that's list. crazy that's ridiculous 
from a torn Achilles. I didn't even come back in five months from my ACL. Yeah, and Kevin Durant freaking was out two years for an Achilles. Two years. And Clay Thompson, well, well, Clay Thompson is different because he tore his ACL and then he tore his Achilles, which is, I don't even know how. That, like, that's all mental right there. Like, I don't know how someone can go through two devastating injuries like that when you're this close to returning. And just, yeah, that's such, that's such a heartbreaking thing. But, like, the thing is with those guys is they have the access to the best possible rehab facilities, the best possible, you know, supplements and health care and whatever it may be. So it's... It's ten times harder for the average person, especially if it's not like you don't have access to those things. And like you said, to go from here to here, and I'm sure you were probably like thinking like dark thoughts. I mean, I don't know who wouldn't, you know, because if you lose the opportunity to play basketball, to play baseball, to play, never mind like the also football, and then might as well you're also dealing with the the ability, the inability to walk and yeah, run. And then also having to like figure out that I got to tell my coach. I didn't tell my coach until like. I think it was like a week after he called me, and I was like preparing basketball. To see what I was, no, my or my base- college coach. Oh, really? Because I was committed at the time. Oh man! And I had a eighty five percent scholarship or some some crazy. And my coach calls me, my assistant coach, not my head coach, my yeah. assistant coach. But he's actually the head coach now. Um, but my assistant coach at the time, he calls me. He goes, "Hey, Coop, like, how you doing? Like, are you healthy?" I was like, "Coach, if I'm being completely honest with you, like." I don't know what happened yet, but I think I tore my ACL. I'm going to need to get surgery and whatever. So my head coach calls me later, and he was like, he's like, hey, Coop, like, I just want to let you know, like, I'm with you. Like, don't worry about it. I'm not taking your scholarship away. He's like, I played football in high school, too. I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't. He's like, I'd be a hypocrite if I tried to take your scholarship away because I would did the same thing. Like, so that actually was kind of a relief off my shoulders. Right. But then it was like, Getting to the point, like you were saying, you get down to this point where it's, now you can't do this, you can't do that. You're in pain at PT, you're in pain walking around the house, like, stuff like that. And it's just like, I'm thinking to myself, am I ever going to get back to the athlete that I was at one point? And for a while, I wasn't. And it took me a while to get healthy. And my biggest mistake, honestly, and I don't regret it, but yeah. it's probably my biggest mistake, yeah. is that... I came back way too soon for my ACL, like way too soon. You think I so? came back on six months, the exact day of six months. Oh, really? Because I wanted to be there for game one for baseball for my team. Like I, I just felt that, like I was like I, I got to do it. And I don't even know if most of those guys even most of those guys or my coach even knew. I literally like went through the ACL test and I like I was in crazy pain, like trying to pass the test. Oh my! And I got I passed the test. I was weak, dude. I was weak as hell. Like I played my first game only taking like two rounds of BP like I was only clear for practice for like two days in the first game was there against Rocky Hill so did you miss any any I did I I missed games because of my I missed games because of uh, so did you have a setback or yes no 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 no. so I just um my coach wouldn't let me play back-to-backs so anytime we had two games back-to-back I would play the first one sit the second one the next day to just make sure I was healthy and get me ready for the playoffs so when did you tear your ACL uh September uh September of 2017 and I came back uh, September, October, November, December. Wait, so it was September. No, November, December. Uh, wait, you tore in September. Yeah, so October, October November, November, December, December January, January, February, March. February, March. So late, late it was March. Like late March, I came back because my surgery was like September twenty third to twenty fifth, somewhere around there. But in terms of running, how how did it feel like a percentage wise? How well were you able to run? Well, for dude, literally, I'm telling you this until last last year. Dude, my legs were like, my legs were uneven still. Really? Like they're finally like, like at the point where they need to be. Like and really? this is four years later. That's crazy. Like I worked on because when I what so like when yeah. I squatted and because for a long time I had a lot of knee pain. I always dealt with knee pain when it was cold out, and then um, wow. when I was squatting and stuff, I always you tend you know like Abel, you know you tend to lean to the other side that you didn't tear your ACL so. My left leg is getting a little bit stronger than my right, so as it keeps going, as it keeps going, my left leg's unproportionate to my right, unproportionate. Jeez. You can't, you can't really tell unless you're like really looking. So finally, like now, I'm I'm at the point where I'm able to squat heavy again. I'm I'm back. Like I feel fast again. I feel good. I feel strong. I feel healthy. And that was last season for me. Last year was like I took two years of college. I got a uh, my freshman year. I had a really good fall, really good fall my freshman year. I think hit something like 375. Like, yeah. I was in the starting lineup as a freshman. Like, right. I was hitting him. And then I got myself into a little bit of trouble. Um, 
and at the school. So then I wasn't able to go to the Florida trip. I missed the first 10 games of the season. Um, and after that happened, it was just like, damn, like now nah, I put myself in a hole. I didn't do really, I, and if I'm being completely honest with you, I didn't do well in school. Yeah. Um, I had a well below GPA that I really should have. Yeah. Um, and if I'm being honest, it was a 2.25, which I've never done in my life before. I've never, I've never gotten any, I've never gotten grade a grade below, I think a C plus ever, and that was like once. Yeah. And at this point, it was like, damn, like I gotta like pick it up. Right. So I come back in the spring, and I don't know what happened. I just like kind of just lost it all. Like I just like, I just couldn't, I didn't couldn't find my swing. Nothing felt comfortable. Wow. Um, I had no confidence. Um, I went from supposed to start. I was getting buried on the bench. I'm getting garbage time at bats. I'm striking out. My, I started my college career one for 17 with 12 strikeouts. Like that's wow. that's terrible. Yeah. Like, and if I'm being 100, like that's bad. And um, I was buried. So I come. So I had a bad freshman year. I didn't, dude. I didn't even make the playoff roster. Really? I was like, when I tell you, like I was sitting in a dorm room watching the watching my team in the playoffs because there's a 35 uh, 30 man roster or whatever it was, yeah. and I didn't make the cut for the 30 man roster. Right. And, like, I was, like, dude, like, everything just kept getting worse, 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 worse. And it was just, like, it was bad. And I get to my sophomore year, and my fall was okay. I didn't do nothing special, whatever. And I'm battling for a starting spot. My coach trusted me, gave me another shot, play center. And then uh, two weeks before the season, we have uh, two inner squads, which we're playing each other. Just means we're playing each other. And uh, played really bad the last two weeks. Lost my spot again to a freshman, and yeah. who is actually one of my really good friends now. And I lost my spot to a freshman. And a lot of people hate COVID, but thank God for COVID, honestly, because yeah. that cut off my season and gave me one more chance. Like I don't know who was looking out for me, but someone was looking out for me. Cut off my season, gave me one more chance. And uh, my sophomore year, I was like a little, I was like a little overweight, uh, like not really overweight, but I was just like feeling a little heavier than I needed to be, and I wasn't as athletic and. Need to get in shape. So after that happened during COVID, I lost 19 pounds. I went from 186 pounds to 167 pounds. Wow. And from there, I've gained 25-ish pounds back to, like, a real muscle build. Like, And it took me a while to just get my body right, and that's what I had to do. And I got my body right. I got my swing right. I really focused on, like, being the best player I could possibly be because in that time after COVID happened, I get a call from my head coach and at the time who's he uh, recently got fired last year, but I got a call from him at the time and he literally looked me in the face and told me he's taking some of my scholarship money away because I didn't deserve it. And I wow. didn't prove to him the player that I, he thought I was going to be. And that's what he said to me. And then it was, and the crazy part is it was on May 8th, which is two days before my birthday. Wow. So I was just like, kind of just like shook up i'm like damn like so i went from losing my starting spot my coach takes my scholarship he looks me in my face and tells me that like you're just not like you're not worth what we gave you you know what i'm saying yeah and so my one goal is like a lot of people a lot of people like to say look like i go through this bad things and bad things that bad things this and nobody has it worse than me but i always looked at it as I didn't need to go complain and tell people this stuff because a lot of the stuff that I'm saying right now is not stuff that a lot of people know. Yeah. And it's not things that I just go out of my way to tell people because no one's going to feel bad for you. Right. The only person who should feel bad for you is you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You. Everybody else is struggling with something. You're struggling with something just like me. You're able struggling with something just like me. Somebody watching this is struggling just like me. Yeah. And what do they care for? They got their own shit to worry about. Right. So they don't give a fuck about me. Like, they could say whatever they want. You could text me and be like, yo, I got your back. But really, in real life, it's like you go text them like, Yo, my life sucks because of this, that, and the next. He's like, "Yo, grow up and go, go fucking do something about it." So what I did was, got in the gym, got as cardio. As soon as that day, as soon as it happened, was that when it all clicked? Yep. As soon but, as I, like for you, that like, was motivation because because there's two different paths people can take. Either they they put their head down and they get they get to work and they get to you know what they get where they gotta go what they gotta do, and then there's other people that curl up on a ball and they just and that's all like they they just. It's over for them. And just to go, like, off your point, it's, like, literally when I tell you, as soon as he hung up that phone, right, it was a Zoom call. As soon as he hung up the Zoom call, I, like, I don't know what clicked, but I was just like, yo, like, this is what I got to do. So this was in May, right? And I had... Was this of 2020, 2019, or 2020? 2020. Wow. 
During the pandemic, Yes, too? right in the pandemic. Wow. So, so keep in mind, I'm that's, already... No, that's crazy. I wouldn't say... That's that's when it really clicked for me where I was like, all right, it's go time. Yeah. But before that, I was already working out, like, in my body, right? I had lost a bunch of weight already, and I'm starting to put weight on again. Yeah. Um, and I'm hitting already and stuff like that. But as soon as that hit, I was... Dude, I, I was me and my brother weren't gonna play summer league. I signed up for a summer league during the pandemic because yeah. we just didn't know what we were gonna do. We were just gonna hit, like do some live at bats and stuff like that. Just get our work in. Yeah. Signed up for a summer league real quick. Got that done, and then um, got in the weight room. I was hitting twice a day. I was hitting in the morning, hitting at night, like late night. I have a cage in my backyard, so I just put the lights on and then yeah. I hit at night. I'll hit early in the morning. I'm in the weights. I'm in the weights for an hour and then I'm doing cardio, 45 minutes, sweatshirt, sweatpants on, making sure that I'm like in shape, like. It just everything clicked for me. And I told him, I literally looked him in the face and said, you're going to, and then I looked at him in the face and said, I understand coach. But I said, I said, you just like lit a fire under my ass. And I have a, I still have a text, um, screenshot of my phone. Uh, I told him, I sent him a text and said, Hey coach, uh, I took a couple of days to like really process what you like our conversation. But, uh, I just want to let you know that like, that's my spot. So don't think about giving it away to anybody else. Wow. I was like, this is exactly what I'm, I'm coming to take it. And I was like, there's nothing you could do to take that away from me. And I texted him that. Wow. And for a second, I kind of thought about it because it, it took me a couple of days because I thought like, is he going to see this as like disrespectful or is he going to see it as more of like, yeah, this kid's hungry. Like, I this think kid most coaches it. see it that way. And, not, not as an asshole thing. And, and so I was like, all right, you know, I'm going to send it. I come yeah. back right in the fall. This was last year. So this is my last season. Yeah. And it's obviously a COVID year. And stuff like that. A lot of tough things happened. My coach ended up getting fired halfway through the year. Yeah. Um, and then was we this got the our, coach who you told that you were? Yeah. Gonna, okay. And then my associate coach who recruited me there, he took over. So I started off the year. My first game starting. I started the game one. I had a really wow. good game. I was like two for four, a couple three RBIs. I think I led the team for RBIs that day. Like, wow. And it was just it was it was a good feeling to just have the guys behind me rally around me, have my back. I, I I'm not gonna name any names, but do you feel like the same? Cooper of I don't think anybody think, feels like they're the same person of old but in terms of confidence and being that guy because when we play football like you were the one who was always the the guy to like you know talk smack like get people fired up and shit yeah so like, like is that how you, you are now or is it different see so I think if this had happened to me back then I think um, I think I would have struggled with it more because what you don't understand is that or what what people don't understand because I'm sure you understand we had this conversation before and it was yeah. more of like you get to the point where if you're at the top, you never struggle to get where you had to. You like not you never you never dealt with any turmoil. You never dealt with any like obstacles. You know yeah. what I mean? Meaning that it was always like smooth sailing, pretty much. Meaning that you're at the top. You're if you, if you're, you start in that position, in you your know. in your like kind of when you have that. For example, like even like not to name drop anyone, but it's like Jared. Like when you had Jared in basketball, Jared's that dude. You know what I mean? Like Jared was that dude. Like he was like. Even not even just Newington, Connecticut basketball. Jared was one of those dudes. Did he was go? Like, was he multi All State? How yeah. many times? Two, two, three times. Three times, I believe. Three time All State basketball and, player that went to our school. And, yeah. But I'm just saying, like you, you got him, and then it's like you got all these other schools. You got all those. You, you can't even name all the volleyball kids. All those volleyball kids that are up on the board. They're, yeah. They got so many All State guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then it's like baseball. It was at the. It was me, my brother, and then my brother followed, and before me was Ben Maycock. Yeah. And it was like. You, when you're at in line of certain things that these people want you to do, it's like you're kind of like smooth sailing all the way up, kind of. Yeah. And then for me, I struggled my first couple years in college. I struggled my senior year of high school. Dude, it was tough. My brother got all state over me my senior year of high school. Yeah. And I'm at, I'm very happy for him that he did that, but it was tough. Like at first, it was tough. It was like, damn, my sophomore, my sophomore little brother just got all state over me. And he deserved it. But he you're coming bet. off a torn ACL. No, and, he, and he, trust me, he deserved it. Yeah. Uh, no. Like, oh, yeah, he's I close. had a. I didn't have as good of a season as he did. Yeah. I still hit decent. I yeah. still hit good. But yeah. he had a. He had a. Re, he just blew up. And that was like the beginning of Gunner. Yeah. It was like he blew up, and that's where like me and me and Gunner both struggled our first two. Like Gunner last year tore his meniscus, broke his face this fall. He's still he's recovering from an orbital fracture. Right wow. Now. How did that happen? He got hit with a. He got hit in the face with a. Uh, ball. They're were, they're were doing a bunting drill, and a fastball came up and then hit him in the face. Oh my! So God, he's geez. just he's recovering from that. But it's like wow. Gunner went from being oh. like Gunner went from being one of the best players in Connecticut to like all right now I'm going to Wofford and I gotta work hard now to get into a spot. So that's what I did last year, and it was just like 
and what back to what I was saying before, I'm not going to name drop any names, but a, a pitcher on my team looked me in the face and said, you're never going to play here because you can't hit. Wow. That's crazy. You don't say that to Cooper, man. And I'm not going to, and I'm not going to, like, I won't name drop. Be honest, when you, when you went there, did it feel like, I know how it feels to not be the guy, like the top dog anymore. No, because when I came or, in, or no, did because, you, were you like always no, because the same when, you when you were there? Because when I came in, they were feeding me this shit that I was gonna be that dude, like I was gonna be that guy, like that's what they brought me in. Oh, to so do. you still came in, confident? so it kind of like they they kind of fed me that. So I kind of like I came in like a little bit of a dick, to be honest, and it was yeah. like. I came in like I deserve everything that's mine. Not more of a dick, but it was more of like I'm not sitting down for none of you seniors. Yeah. Like, I'm not sitting down. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not bowing down to none of you guys. I don't do that shit. Like, I'm my own person. Like I don't do that. Yeah. And it's just like one of those things where when that guy looked me in the face and literally like he humbled me, bro. He just said, "You are never gonna play here. You cannot hit." So what Did I he mean that, it too? Yeah. Wow. I'm actually, I'm actually, and, I, and I'm, I'm actually, surprised. I'm no, surprised, and, yeah. and, and listen, I'm actually, like, I'm good friends with him, actually. Like, wow. he, he's a good dude. That's crazy. And, and I tell him, I, I literally told him last year, I said, yo, before the season started, I said, yo, this season's for you, I hope you know that. He's like, what? I was like, you don't remember what you said to me? I was like, trust me, this season's for you. Yeah, some people and it was say just, things and they forget what and it was they just, said. It was, other it was people like, remember that shit. It was yeah. really, like, nice to, like, feel the love by my team, to, like, right. have confidence that, all right, I'm back. Like, I had a good year last year, but not to where my ceiling should be. I have two more seasons left of eligibility. I'm a senior in the classroom right now, but yeah. uh, I'm a redshirt junior on the field because of COVID. We got our years back, so I'm going to go get my master's next year back in the Delphi, Good most likely. You. Yeah. Most likely. And uh, I'll play again. Uh, but it was good. It was great. Like, it, even now, it's great. Like, the younger guys look up to me, and, like, they're always asking me for advice or if I can help them with some extra work, let's go hit or – Let's go get uh, let's go get some outfield reps, or let's go. I'll hit you fungos or some stuff like that. It's just good. Like it's it's good to feel the love finally again. Yeah. Where it's like, all right, these guys look up to me. They trust me. They like they know my abilities, and it's one of those things where, for a while, it was like I'm on the bottom because I legitimately, when I tell you, I was on the bottom. Like I was, and and I'll be flat honest. Like I was on the bottom, and it's just like, like we said before, you got two choices: you nut up, yeah. or you curl on a ball and you feel bad for yourself because. Right. And think that everybody else is gonna feel bad for you because they're not. So right. you, that's just one of my things where it was like, and I struggled, bro. And we and we talked about this before too. It was like yeah. not just that; it was deeper than that. Right. It was like it got to, it got to depression. I was de- I was in I'd suffered from mental health for three years. And yeah. That's not something that I tell a lot of people. And yeah. It's very personal. It's very personal to me because, um, it was one of those things where, when you have this like name or image or something you're trying to back up whether you created it or someone else created it for you, it's like, it to me, I was embarrassed, dude. I was embarrassed to tell people, like, yo, like, I'm fucked up. Like, yeah. Like, I'm sitting at home crying. I'm upset. Like, I'm thinking bad thoughts. Like, yeah. I'm doing all this other, like, just shit I shouldn't be doing. I was getting in trouble outside of school. Like, getting in trouble in school. Like, I just, it was just bad. And, and it's one of those things where I had to realize that I can't do it myself. I got to tell somebody. I got to talk about it. And that's why, like, now mental health is so serious because it's like, right. dude, you got to, like, that a, – a lot of people deal with mental health, yeah. whether it's a small amount or a, a lot, lot a large more amount. more people than you think. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and whether it's just – I was just – I was in a class and it was just like, even whether if it's just your your anxiety or fear of dying, like, that's still part of, like, that's still part of that. Like, and there's a crazy stat that, like, one in every, like, two people is, like, scared to die. It's, like, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> me and Abel, if you're, if you're listening, me and Abel just looked at each other. Abel's, who's going to die first, Abel, me or you? No, but it's like, I'll fuck you up. Or something like that. And it's just like one of those yeah. things where I dealt with it and I was embarrassed. Yeah. And instead of being embarrassed, like, I remember this is like, this is when I really realized that I needed to get help. Right. And um, this is also something that I I don't tell a lot of people, not not a lot of people know about me. So yeah. my senior year, I got into a little bit of a trouble um, and... Let's just say the police were involved, yeah. and I I got arrested, and I had to go to court, and um, it was nothing crazy serious, just like a, it was a fight, lost my temper, and yeah. um, that's how that happened, and right. had to go to court, and that's when that shit clicked for me, because when the cops showed up to my house and said that they had to arrest me, I broke down in tears, because I was like, damn, like this is like this is what my parents like. My parents worked so hard to get me to a point where, like to get me to this point where all right i got a scholarship i'm like i'm lined up and i just ruined everything yeah to get a scholarship to be successful to stay out of trouble to to not do any of that shit you know right. what i mean 
that point, I broke down. And I started crying. And I was like, damn. Like, wow. So for the past three years, I've been not. Well, I, I still have. I still have. So actually, not three years. Uh, since my senior year of high school, I still talk to my therapist. I have a therapist. And Good just, for you. And now it's like. Now now at this like, point, is it more like staying on top of yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah, even yeah. Like, but now it's like I don't have like no like People, I don't have like uh, scheduled appointments. It's more like no, yeah. if I got if I'm like if I got a question or I'm feeling some type of way, I'll call them. That's like, so, hey, it's like, very smart. Like, hey, here. And it's actually good because it opened up a door. My sister now talks to him, and good. it just opens up doors for people. And I know a couple other people that talk to him and stuff like that. So yeah. he's a really good dude. And it was one of those things where I had to stop being ashamed of it because I was in a really, really, really dark place. Yeah. And that's also, and not to make excuses, but that's another reason why I acted certain ways in high school and why there were certain perceptions of me that weren't correct. Yeah. And it was that I was going through stuff that people didn't understand. Right. And honestly, I was going through all that until about until about covid like once right. covid a lot of people i know a lot of people started dealing with uh mental health like during covid and covid for me was when i kind of just like broke free of like okay i gotta like i gotta just stay clear like let me stay clear let me clear my head this is my own time i get time right. to myself um and just be able to like reset and it was kind of one of those things where i could reset as much as possible but that was a definitely a big stepping stone to where I'm at today. Cause like today I could tell you that, and back to what you're saying, what is happiness to me? I don't think there's anything not saying happiness isn't real, but for me, happiness is just peace. That's what I'm saying. Like not, I completely happiness agree. is like being at peace. Happiness to me is if you can wake up and not think any bad thoughts. And the first thing you do is take a fucking piss. Or you just brush your teeth, brush your teeth, and you check your phone. Check your phone, watch a show. You you yeah. go, you can you can go to work with no stress. You're just but going it's just to work. like or you for... go, you do your thing, and then you can go to bed without thinking my life is shit and I don't want to be here anymore. And it's like that every day yeah. where you're just at peace, you're content, and it can just go up most days rather than down. Yeah. That's that to me is happiness. Just happiness, is just being at it, it's, it's being content. It's being in that spot or not content, where it's like because yeah. obviously. Yep. I, I'm never gonna be content where I'm at in life. Yeah. I'm sure you too. Like, yeah, no, yeah, but for sure. Happiness is just being at peace. Like, yes. like I could, like I could just tell by you just being here. It's not that you're always smiling and giggling and shit, but it's like every time you're, every time you're at a, like you're doing one of these podcast interviews or conversations, you're sitting here and you're just, you're like no worries, no stress. There's yeah. nothing to worry about. It's like, and for me, that's where I'm at right now. Good. And I, it took me a while to get there, and it's like three, four months ago. It was like, was I at that space? Nah, I wasn't. Cause I've had a tough semester and stuff like that, but yeah. I had to re, I had to really sit back and reset. Like, yo, yeah. there's better things coming. Like, I got better things ahead of me. Um, there's gonna be more people I'm gonna meet, better people I'm gonna meet, um, better things. I still got two, dude. I got two more seasons left of baseball to be happy about. Which is awesome. I got, I'm getting my master's next year. Like, nice. it, and it's good. Like, I'm at a, I'm at a spot right now where it's like, I'm, I'm ha- like, I'm, I'm happy all the time. I'm calm. I'm yeah. not. I'm not feeling bad about nothing. I'm not no. down. It's just I'm I'm getting up every morning, go to the gym, do my hitting, do my field work, yeah. chill with my boys, you know what I mean? Chill with my brother while he's home. Yeah. Like and just be able to be with my family sometimes, especially now that I'm back at school. Right. And it's just like it, it's a it's a good thing to just kinda come back here for break, get my mind off things and just reset and be able to like really get to that space where like you're at peace. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. This is the first time in years bro that i can honestly tell you right now like this second that i'm like i'm at peace Good like for i'm, you, I'm man. happy like that's that's what i could definitely say yeah, that was that was something you just said right there seriously i i mean i don't think people truly understand how important it is to some people don't believe the whole therapy thing for me the way i looked at it is first of all i know i needed that shit <laughs> after i it's mean nothing to be and it's nothing to be ashamed no it, it, it is it is that's yeah. the that's what it's, yeah no 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 it's especially now and hell no that's Everyone what knows. that's what people get it twisted is yeah. people think that like going to talk to somebody or like being upset or showing your raw emotions is like yeah. is embarrassing and that's yeah. where i got it wrong yeah me too. because like i was just saying before i just dude i just i just lost my grandma uh yeah i just lost my grandmother uh a week and a half ago it was december 15th uh 6 55 yeah. a.m um I just lost my grandma, and it was one of those things where I kept trying to tell myself, I don't believe it, I don't believe it, I don't believe it. And then when I finally got up there at the funeral, and I had to, like, give her the, my eulogy and, like, my yeah. remembrance of her and my speech yeah. that I wrote, it kind of, like, opened up, and I was like, damn, like, all right, let me, like, don't be ashamed of these emotions. Like, right. My grandma was my best friend, bro. Yeah. I got, I still wear her bracelet. This is the one, the last one she wore before she died, right wow. here on my wrist. And 
I got multiple tattoos for her and stuff like that, and I'm going to get one soon, actually. And uh, you guys are going to be able to see. I'm going to have some uh, custom cleats dedicated to her wow. by my, my buddy, Delusha. Um, and uh, I just think that I was able to just, like, let the raw emotions out because right. if you let those raw emotions out, there's nothing in you to hide, and that's nothing to be ashamed of. In high school, see, that's the thing. In high school, especially like with the football locker room, me personally, like for example, I could watch a movie and a TV show. After 45 minutes, I can genuinely become emotionally attached. Like for example, like a character, to the point where something happens to them, they die. Like, I, like I'll cry. Like I'm being honest. Like I could watch a two-hour movie, and, I, and I'm not ashamed of it. But especially in high school, me knowing the person that I was is. After a practice, they had a shitty fucking day, or I, you know, it's going through something. I was just, instead of letting my emotions out whenever, however, I just bottled it in because I was, I was thinking to myself, I can't, I cannot show this look in front of me. Like, I, it'll be even worse for me. So I just bottled it up, and eventually, certain things happened to me, whether it was not, it was outside of the school, inside the school. Maybe it was just me overthinking things for the most part, but I just know. I went out on my own terms. I didn't walk at my graduation. I mean, to this day, I don't regret it. The only people that I say, if I were to go back and make things different, I would have walked for my grandparents. God rest their souls. Um, that's the only thing that, that would have been sure. different. I would have done it for them because I know that they were a little... Because I didn't tell anybody. Like, yeah, and I know, listen, at the end of the day, yeah. you, I, I honestly think that you can sit back and say that they're proud of you for making a decision yeah. that yeah. that you were comfortable with right. and a decision that you wanted to do. Yeah. Because you didn't do that for anybody else, you did that for you. Yeah. And you, and it's crazy because even you didn't even you didn't even have to explain it. And I remember that Instagram video, and I was telling you about that. Yeah. I, re, I remember I reached out to you after, and I was like, "Yo, like, I give you big props for like yeah. coming out of your shell." And you didn't even have to do that. You you didn't owe anybody. You didn't yeah. owe anybody an explanation. Yeah. Or, my mom was telling me that she was like, "I'm surprised you even did that." Like, and you know what you I mean? You, yeah. you didn't owe you didn't owe nobody shit. Yeah. You didn't you don't owe them an explanation. You didn't owe them even a response to what was going on in your life, but you yeah. did. Because yeah. you let people know, like, this is why I did it. I'm proud of it. This is me. Yeah. So if you have a problem with it, then then that's you. Because right. and that and that's the thing. That's the thing that some people get it twisted. And this is where I this is where I kind of fumbled the bag a little bit when it comes to stuff like that. Where right. I in high school I cared so I really didn't give a fuck about what anybody said. I'm jealous. And of I was that. and I was one of those people where yeah. I was one of those people where I'm gonna be me. You're yeah. gonna either you're gonna either love Cooper Johnson or you're gonna hate him. And I was okay with some of that. Yeah. And now to think think about it now, it's like I look at some people and I'm like, I don't, me personally, I don't think I'm a scary person. I don't think I'm a bad person. I think I'm actually a pretty good person. I think I'm a genuine person. If I'm I being honest, that, in high school, I was scared of you. <laughs> I'm just being, I'm just being real. It's one of those things that I no, don't I'm want, just being I don't want it to be personal. like, I don't want it to be like, yeah. yo, I see you in public and I want to say what up to you. Yeah. Don't be afraid to like come say hi to me. I'm a good dude. Like, yeah. I want to say hi to you. Like, it, 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 like it's kind of good seeing people from high school, even if it's people that like, it is. even if it's people that I didn't even that I wasn't friends with before. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I knew, I mean, I knew almost everybody in our grade and people below and stuff like that. Have you ever pulled the card where you, you know them, but you act like you didn't remember who they were? I did it once. I'm not going to say to who, but I've done it once. Nah, I felt kind of, I felt kind of shitty, usually, but I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Usually like I try to like, I try to show love to like Good. everybody that That's I awesome. do see and everybody that I like, everyone that I see here and there, even if I, even if I, even if I don't know if they have fond thoughts or fond ideas of me. You say, you say what's up. And you know what I mean? I still try to say what's up. That's and awesome. And I'll get a vibe, you know what I mean? And I'll yeah. understand. But, yeah. like, I still follow a bunch of people on social media. Right. And, and uh, like, I mean, I deleted Snapchat for a while because I wanted to get off that because I was like, yeah. I was like, yo, fuck all that shit. I'm not trying to, like, post shit for nobody else. I'm just yeah. chilling. Like, yeah. And I got it back. And, I mean, yeah, I've been adding some people here and there from Snap, I mean, from high school. And, like, yeah. like it, it, it just, like, kind of, it's kind of cool to see where people are at, like, five, six years later, like, yeah. from when, it we actually were, is, yeah. when we were there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just, like, I try to, I, I just, I just want people to know that, like, I'm still always going to be me. But at this point, it's, like, sometimes I got to cater myself to be around certain people. You know what I mean? You can't just be, like, you can't just be you. and Like, you can be you around everybody, but you got to, like, know sometimes when to filter. Do you plan on going to the reunion, high school reunion? I don't even know what. I don't even know when it is. Is it every 10 years? Every ten, so twenty twenty eight, and it's gonna be crazy to see where people are at twenty twenty eight. You gotta go use bathroom quick. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, man, uh, honestly, dude, freaking, uh, nah. I think in high school, a lot of people had a lot of differences, a lot of, you know, how do how do I say this? 
we had a lot of personalities, and I th- and and that's and that's that's okay. And I just think that I I just know in my heart I can't wait to see a lot of people and where they're at. And just I hope everyone's doing well. I mean, we're recording this on Christmas Eve. Uh, it'll probably come out. I don't even know when. Probably next year. To be Technically next year because. Technically, because we got like. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. So. Uh, but going back to what you were yeah. saying, like how he was saying, like, yeah, like he, like he didn't really care about. That's what insane. About. I, I'm in that mindset now. Every every single day I went to school. Yeah. I had to dress appropriately. Yeah. I had to show up. I had to like, like my conversation with different people should be, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, kind right. of like different depending on the person. Yeah. Like if it was, if it was like you know my football guys, you know like B. Yeah, yeah, we 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 knew we we knew we knew who we could act. Like we we it's like we had to put on a mask for certain people. Exactly, exactly. And it's so weird now because I'll talk to, like we would talk to if we were around girls, we would be we would like, we wouldn't be ourselves. Me, I don't give a shit who I'm around. I'll be myself. You know what I mean? Like 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 that. Then if I'm talking to if I'm around Cooper. Or like those guys, for example, I would, um, you know, shy away. I, w- I would just let them have the limelight, and have that let like them rock, and while we just take the back seat. Exactly. But now I think we're on a playing ground, and when he gets back, we can talk about it. Because I but saw it, that yeah. difference. Yeah. I saw that difference when I didn't play football. Right. That one year that I didn't play football. Right. That's when I got to know more about Gavin. Yeah. And all those people. Right. Like, you know, who didn't play football, who were like other yeah. than. The football guys. Like, yeah. That's where I got to know, like, oh, shit, like, I can talk the way I want. Right. With these guys, but, like, not with the guys that are, like, yeah. that are my teammates. Right. Which is, which is pretty. Nah, yeah, no, nah, I think, I don't know about you, Koo, but I was telling, I talk about this with people, and I say, this isn't something that I've been told, but it's something that I've sort of learned, is once high school is done and you're around the same people that you've been with since pretty much middle school even maybe elementary school depending if you put like rec sports or anything but at that point it's like you can't please everybody and you can't hang out with everybody that's the one thing i had a lot of not a lot of friends that's over i had a lot of people that i was friendly with and once you know you go to college or you go to work right after high school whatever it is you do like a lot of those people just kind of fade out and like you said, like you'll yeah. see them around in town or you'll see them wherever, but you don't talk to them. You talk to whoever's in your immediate circle or whoever you, you know, you associate yourself more with now. It's all about the now. And it's and that's why I don't back then in high school, so here's what my problem was along with what I was dealing with. So say someone like you was having a really good time, not you specifically, but someone like you was having a really good time. I always thought to myself, why the fuck do they get to have a good time? And I feel like this. I, that's what I was thinking. I would never tell anybody, but I was always envious. I was always jealous of people that even if someone like you said, you, you don't care what people thought of you. So you can have a lot of people hate, it, hate you and you can still have a good time and not be phased by anything, at least from what you said. And like me personally, like I, I was just jealous as to why, like why do, why do all the popular kids or why do all the kids that are always involved or talked about or well-known. Why do they always feel this type of way? And here I am trying to be the best person I can be, and I feel like a piece of shit. Uh, so my personal, this is this is the way I feel, yeah. honestly. And I can't speak for everybody, yeah. but I think that it's, you're kind of around the people where your stars align. So yeah. it's like when you're in high school and say you got the, like the athlete kids and then you got the other kids that aren't athletes that are still popular and the, like the funny guys and stuff like that, like, all their stars align. So yeah. it's like, once you leave high school, it's like, you see kids who are, oh, this kid was like, this kid got all the girls, or this kid was mad funny, or this kid got all the, did all the good grades, and this kid was doing this, and right. this kid was driving this car and that car. But it's like, you get as you get older, I think that drop-off comes from more, like, like I say, it's like, where your stars align. So that's why yeah. I think, like, I think now that, like, me and you get. I think me and you mesh better now. Yeah. Not, that, not saying oh. we ever didn't. No. Because yeah. I've. No, I mean, me and you have known each other for. Yeah. Since elementary school. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah. It's one of those things where, I think we mesh better now because now we we both have the same goals. We right. still we have the bo- we have the same like aspirations where. Yeah. You want to be great. 
doing this and doing what you want to do, right? Yeah. And I want to be great in my own area. Right. Meaning that if baseball doesn't work out, then I want to be great with whatever I do with my degree or whatever job that I get later in life. You know what I mean? And right. That's the problem. And the problem is a lot of the people that were at that point in their life still have that glory from high school, bro. I, like, yeah, a lot it, of people live in the past. It's it's actually funny to say. I Sometimes I wish I don't remember. I Like, I didn't remember high school sometimes. Cause Me too. Honestly, high school is like as it's much awesome. as... For, as much I, as what I genuinely think is, but I don't think. It, see, for me, I don't think it was the teachers. I don't think it was the school. I genuinely think, like you say, it's who you're around. But I, 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 I think a lot of people, a certain, I'm telling you, negative, like negative thoughts and just toxicity, it carries over I, throughout. But see, I don't think it's, I don't think it's like that. I think that the, I think a lot of the hate, a lot of the hate that came from shit just drew, like it was drove from jealousy. Like that's what it was. Yeah. It was like. It was like it wasn't more of like I hate you. You think it was more everyone was jealous? I, I don't of one think another? it's I don't think it's I hate you because you're you. Yeah. I think it's more like I don't I don't fuck with you because you're dating this girl that I want, or I don't fuck with you because you got this jersey number. I don't fuck with you because you got these Jordans. I don't. Oh, fuck so with you, you think it was more like for petty yeah, stuff? Yeah, bro. It's not so? like it's more like I don't fu- like I don't I fuck with you because you're starting. Yeah. Or I don't fuck with, like. Yeah. Like, there was times where I remember hearing people like, yo, I don't fuck with him. Why don't you fuck with him? What did he ever do to you? Yeah. Even, like, some teammates, like, I've had teammates True. in college that be like, yo, like, I don't fuck with him. Why don't you fuck with him? Because what? Because he's ahead of you on the depth chart? Yeah. Like, why don't you fuck with him? Because he gets, like, he gets better grades or he gets more females or he's yeah. got a better car than you. Or, yeah. Who cares? Like, who gives a fuck about that shit? And I think that's the problem. A lot of the hate that people have. Hate comes from jealousy. And yeah. That's how I feel. It's like now nah, that's def- it definitely. And I don't was. hate no. I don't hate anybody. Yeah. There's no reason for me to hate anybody. Like I, I have love for everybody. It yeah. doesn't matter. Like regardless, if they feel that way towards me. But yeah, I think once, for me, another thing is when you. So when you're going through shit, this is I, I can't speak on anybody else's behalf but my own. When I was going through stuff, I assessed who's in my life, what am I doing now, what can I change, what. What do I need to sort of stop thinking? So, like, for me, I I even do this now. Even actually now, for per, like to be honest, this will be happening the other day. Somebody asked me a question about, for example, like what happened to me in terms of like going to prom or whatever. And I literally just said like that's a story for another day. I'm never gonna I, like I'll tell it once in a blue moon now, but I'm not gonna get into it. Like it's just like for me, it's, you know, stuff like that is so it, it's in the past. And to be honest. If certain events didn't happen to me, personally, I don't think I would be here. I think I had to go through. So, I was always, you know, I felt like I was going on the down, the downturn. And then once I, you know, figured out my shit, graduation happened. And then I assessed, you know, where my life's at. Went to therapy. Got asked certain questions I didn't know the answers to. Went and found the answers to those questions that I was given. And finally, you know, unlocked the confident version of myself. It's just, that's when all the... Because I used to throw around the word... I hated this, but I, 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 I don't think you can go throughout life without saying I hate somebody once. Like it, everybody at some point, they'll throw the word around without realizing how much it truly means. And I mean, I don't hate anybody. There's obviously certain people that I wish people nothing but the best, but that doesn't mean all due respect just because, you know, I'm cool with everybody means I want to associate myself with somebody I hardly knew or just didn't get along with. I wish you nothing but the best. just not around me. That That's just... Me personally, and no, no, I agree with yeah, you. and then I think the whole hate thing—that's when that goes out the window. That's when constantly talking about your past, constantly talking about um how things used to be. I'm not worried about how things used to be. But you don't gotta hate anybody. It's no, more, you, you don't. Gotta, it's yeah, more of just right. or, I mean, not hate. I, I don't mean that. I mean, you don't gotta you don't gotta like anybody. Yeah. it's just more of like you just don't, don't give that. No, you just don't worry about. That. Yeah, it's, it's you. You show them respect. Yeah. Because that, that's at least what you owe every single person. You owe every single person at least respect yeah. until they've shown that. You, they don't deserve that yeah. And that's the thing You don't gotta Like for example Like just just an example It's like you don't have to like me I don't have to like you Even though we are boys But yeah. it's more of like You don't have to like me I don't have to like you Or I don't yeah. But you should treat me with respect I should treat you with respect You know what I'm yeah. saying And that that is the like That's like the minimum Of being just at least a good person Is just show somebody respect You don't gotta like them Or anything Or hate them Or nothing It's not, not even about that You don't have to associate Just It's respect Like right. yo I respect you But Whatever you you got going on, yeah, whatever stuff right. you have in your life, I prefer that just away from me. And that's just not where I fit my life goals into. And that's just what it is. I think it's huge, though, what you said, though. A person like you, you know, obviously it's not like I have a million subscribers or anything. At least, yeah, I'm going to say yeah. You will. <laughs> no, no, but, you will. I, no, but I'm not. I'm not. Hold on, hold on. We're going to mark this right now. Yeah. That'd be, We're going to mark this right shit. now. Mario will have 
a million subscribers on the Fudge Effect. No, I would love first. to. That'd be nuts. I would love to. You and I would and I would first. No, no, but listen, so I'm gonna say this now because I try and get away with like name dropping certain things now because I'm not as big. Mm. But for a town in which we live in, I think that a person like you who has um you know, like your name holds value in this town. Like the like, people know who you are. It's not like like most people when they hear your name, it's not like they go who? Like for the most part. I would think so, especially if you're around like our age. So I think that you, a person like you genuinely coming on here and talking about what you've gone through, showing humility, showing that it gets better, which I constantly preach, it does get better. Yeah, like, really like right now, we're, we're, you know, it's the holidays and, you know, I lost my, my grandfather this year. You just lost your grandmother. I mean, it sucks. It really does. Yeah, you know, it's, the no, yeah, it's, it's really sad. I mean, me, I lost two grandparents this year. Like, like I'm done. My grandparents are no longer here. Like, it's like a whole new, to me, after a few weeks of my grandfather passing, I kind of saw it as, man, like, this is, this is not, like, this is reality. Like, it's a whole new era. Like, my, like, all my, um, personal closest, uh, you know, older relatives, like, are gone in terms of grandparents-wise. And now it's on to me and, like, my cousins, my younger generation to kind of take over. And with that, I mean, you know, it it was hard at first, but... I just think during the holidays and stuff, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that are, you know, remembering their relatives, you know, it's very sad times, but at the same time, you know, I'm sorry, my dogs are barking, but regardless, you know, you know, deep in your heart, like they're always with you. I personally believe in God. I believe you're a man of faith as well. Yeah. And I know Abel is as well. Sure. So, you know, you know that if you believe in that, you know, they're in a good place, you know, that all is well with them. And, you know, you know that the best thing you can do is just stay positive in life. You know, I remember someone once said it should never be. A son having to, or a father having to lose their child, or a mother having to lose a child, like the way nature works, it's the other way around. And when I was thinking negative thoughts, another thing that kind of turned me like the other way into the positive direction is my mother. I love her. She's a godson. I really do, even though I might not always show it and can kind of act like an asshole. She, if if she were to lose me, that would just make her. I know it would make her life, my father's life, my siblings' life. Ten times worse, a hundred times worse. I couldn't let that happen, so I decided, I was like, you know what, like I gotta get, I gotta get my shit together. And you know, I'm working on the more health aspect now. The health things, like you talked about, certain things you did. Like now, I literally just started this last week, but now I write a daily log. I woke up at this time, did this, did that, and I track what I do. I try and drink X amount of water a day. I try and, you know, I'm, I'm figuring all that shit out. I mean, meal planning is a really bitch. Good. Meal prepping is a bitch. I mean, I'm not. No, you know, definitely yeah. sucks. Yeah, though. no, no, no. Like, and I don't even have, like, the budget or anything to do that. I just try and. You just gotta make, I just try make not way, to eat bro. shit. I just try not to eat, like, shit. And, you know, that's. But, but it's just regardless of what I'm doing. A person like you, or even just me, to just show humility. Like, I'm telling, like. I'm sure you know people all the time. Like the whole, and this goes back to the Instagram thing. They show one side of themselves, but in reality, they're going through a whole yeah. different world that we could even imagine. And I, tr- I try not to put my or walk in somebody else's shoes because you can't do that. I mean, but yo, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, Inst- you you should definitely like. Yes, you should definitely be able to celebrate your life and celebrate you what can. you're doing. Yes, like, and, and you know what I mean. And, yeah, and people are going to be happy for you. And that's great you for know sure. I mean? that's awesome. Yes, but it's for just sure. Like, you also can't look at it as. This is how their life is. Yes. You don't know the other side. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I completely agree. And and you're right. I mean, I didn't need to post that video. I did. But, I mean, it was going on the pandemic. Pers- personally, as soon as 2020 started, that's when everything clicked with me. The whole pandemic. I had people coming to me telling me because it's, it's a funny-ass joke. Because after graduation, the whole summer, I stayed inside. I never went out. I was pale as shit. And people... Like that, like I kind of got used to the idea at the time. We no one ever was able to comprehend it because nobody else did it. But the whole I- idea of quarantine, I was kind of quarantining before anybody else because I was staying inside. So as soon as the pandemic hit, I had friends on PlayStation like, dude, Mario, like you got to tell us what the fuck are we supposed to do? And I was like, I'll tell you, like I-, I can genuinely tell you how to like make the most of your time, how to like be- like better your mental health, whatever it is. And we had a- we all had a blast on PlayStation. Like, we would stay up late doing whatever. I mean. In our town, I mean, I tried to play basketball a couple of times, and they would fucking tell us to get off the course because of everything that was going on, which was crazy. It was scary. Yeah, everything was. Nobody. Everything I was, was wearing crazy. gloves going to the gas station at first. Like nobody knew yeah, what the too, hell this. Bro. It was. It was, it was crazy. crazy. It was crazy. So, for me personally, and I hope everybody else took advantage of this. 
and it's not like I mean I was working, but you know the pandemic, you know I, I didn't work at that at that point. But regardless, like if you had a shitty job or you were in a shitty point in your life, and everybody when they were staying inside, you genuinely had that time slot, however long, how many many weeks or months it was, to sit tight, sit back, assess what you want. You can ask Abel during. So like the pandemic early uh, early on, and I have a uh, buddy of mine who I kind of entertained the thought with, and then eventually I just took this and ran with it. I knew since since 2019, I thought of the idea of a podcast. 2020 was when I got my first, what was my first poster that I got? It might have been these two, the Futurama and the Kanye one. And then from there, I was like, let me... Let me pimp out my room real quick. Let me make this a man cave. And then from there, with the whole idea of the podcast thing, with the man cave, then I posted a picture saying, like, let's let's have a talk. Right. Yeah, let's have a talk in my room or whatever. Like, we could talk about whatever. And and whether I made the podcast or not, the caption still, like, kind of works regardless. And then I was like, I think I could genuinely do this. And then I kind of ran. I bought a mic. And then I had a fucking Chromebook. The Chromebook was shit. I, I couldn't use both mics at the same time. So I was like, shit, now I need a Mac. Saved up, got a Mac. And then just... The thing with life is, man, you just got to... It's one brick at a time. One brick at a time. And you have to stay... stay, It's a marathon. You have to stay patient. And this is the quote that... uh, That really... That I use. It's my favorite quote. And this is the the quote that I used to get me out of where I was at. Yeah. And I actually have it tattooed on me on my chest. Yeah. And it's by uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. Wow. And it's, uh, darkness cannot outdrive darkness. Only light can do that. And uh, hate cannot outdrive hate. Only love can do that. So it just shows that, like... You can't, you're never going to be able to get out of that spot or keep working towards what you're doing until you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Right. And it's the same thing. It's like, you're never going to stop feeling the hate until you start seeing the love. And then when you do that, everything starts to click. When you see the light, you see the love, everything clicks. And that's like, that's really what it is. And to be honest, to go just what you're saying is like, COVID was almost like, you got to take that as like a blessing. For me, it was a blessing in disguise. For me. For me too. I know a lot of people people really fucked them up. Yeah. And as bad as COVID was, it's like, yeah, you got to take it for what it was and do what you did with COVID. Like, whatever, all that free time you had, yeah. if you wasted that, I f- yeah, it stinks. It's, it's tough because yeah. you're never going to get that back. You don't get yeah. time back. You yeah. can't waste that. No, like, but a pandemic, like, this this probably won't happen for another, what, like, thousand years? I don't know. hundred years? Who knows, years, bro? It might happen 200 again. 200 years? Yeah. Who knows? It could, it it, it actually, I could. It could. Yeah, it might happen it def- again. Who yeah, knows? It definitely can. No, but, like. For me, I just knew, I was like, this is the opportunity where I'm, and even now, I'm still constantly learning. I mean, I turned 21 in a few days. I've never, I never had a fake. I've never gone to the bar, never been to the club. That's another element of life I get to learn and appreciate, depending if I like it or not. But for me, you know, when it comes to life, like, I'm just constantly learning. I'm constantly feeling like I'm finding myself each day, which I feel like most people should try to do. I mean, you just gotta, whether... And and if you don't like working out, if you have no motivation to work out, listen to music and just go for a walk. Do some yoga. Stretch. Anything yeah. simple. And and I'm telling you, there's days where I feel like I don't want to... Music's I don't wanna, the best therapy, I, yeah. bro. Yeah, seriously. And it's the number one language. Everyone, I, just, everyone listens to music. That's what everyone I do, talks bro. About All it, yeah. I do is I, nope. I'm in a, I just like feel like shit. Or, yeah. I, what, first thing I do in the morning, I literally wake up, get on my playlist, boom, shuffle. Yeah, let's, let's for, play. for me, I listen to music all the time when I'm in the car, chilling. Me but, too, car or, or all the time. Or I'm listening to podcasts all the time. In That's the kitchen, my therapy. If yeah. I'm cooking in the kitchen, I'm listening to music. Me and my mom were just doing that before. Yeah. Just in the in the kitchen listening to music. Right. Like, that's that's what I do. I mean, I'm not even gonna lie to you. It's probably like what I do ten hours of my days listening right. to music. Seriously, twelve hours of the day I'm yep. listening to music. Like, and it's crazy. Yeah. And that's like a great therapy because you just vibe. Right. You're not worried about nothing else. You're just hearing the beat, hearing the song. And right. Like, that's just cool. And I mean, it's just like one of those things. You just gotta you find something that. And it's not even about like. It's not just going to. It's just finding certain things that make you happy and kind of get your mind like make your life better. You know what I mean? Right. Make you healthier. So it's like regardless of what you do, whether you're eating right, going to the gym for an hour a day, forty five minutes. That's you gotta you make sure the mindsets there yeah. too. But it's, it's like it's more than just your, actions. And even just training your mind, it's like whether like whether that person likes to read books, read magazines, watch podcasts like right. you do, yep. or listen to music, watch music videos, you know what I mean? Watch TV, watch yep. YouTube, yeah. play Xbox, play PlayStation, just find something that's yeah. going to make you like, yeah. you know what I mean? Make you feel better, make you like, make your life, make your life healthier. And it's and, like when you do stuff like that, yeah. your life just becomes better. You start to do little things like, oh, I've been reading these couple of books or I've been listening to this music or I've been listening to this music, going on a walk, doing yoga or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, you're doing that. Okay. Now, oh, maybe I want to start eating better. Maybe I want to, like, 
You know what I mean? Maybe Once, I want to go talk to somebody. Yep. Maybe I want to go to the gym now, like stuff like that. And it's like that shit starts rolling, bro. And, and everything, then, everything happens for a reason. And the way I see it, that's a fact. And I was talking to my my therapist when I when I was at the time. I don't go to therapy anymore because I was a good spot. I might go back just to like like you said, like stay on top of shit. But that's why I like do the writing, the daily log thing. But I think so for me personally, I knew a part of when. I was at peace, the whole peace thing that you're talking about, is when I made that post, you know, I was chilling at uh, my, my dad's, and I was like, you know what, this is during the pandemic, I know, I'm sure a lot of people are going through a lot of shit right now, and meanwhile, like, I'm feeling pretty good, as, as you know, as, you know, open I was in that, that video, like, talking about what happened to me and what I went through, I know that there's a lot of people probably going through worse, if not, they were going through their own shit, so I thought, let me just show that I'm someone, whether it's from the state, town, or in general on social media, that, you know, reality, the, like, the real world, for, it's not what most people think. Like, it's okay to show people that someone is going through something or went through something and let people know what's going on. And I had people, I had people DMing me and they said, dude, like, you have no idea how much I needed to hear that. And it was, I was like, dude, what? I didn't expect, I didn't expect, I expected. You don't understand how yeah. much, like, a few words can change people's yeah, lives. Yeah, seriously. And I was like, dude, like, I didn't even, that, that, like, I appreciate you, you know, like saying that, but like my intentions was just, just kind of get some just like clarity off my shoulders. It wasn't like, and, and I'm great. It really affected people in a positive way because That's my goal was to just, other, it helped yeah, others. Yeah. My goal was to just pretty much talk about me and me alone and, and you know, things happen. But a, a crazy thing is it's kind of a pet peeve of mine. So me and you were having a genuine conversation. We're giving each other attention. We're, we're in the, the moment. I can't stand people. And this is the reason I want to do this in the first place. This is a great ass conversation. And there's people where I can try and have a conversation like this with them, and they just, they just don't give me any fucking attention. I'm trying to tell them something that's important to me, and they just don't even but fucking sometimes listen. Sometimes people aren't, but so, and that's the thing is like, sometimes people aren't real enough for that. People yeah, aren't, and like, at that point, I just, I just stop talking. If I'm, t if like for example, if it's you, if I'm talking to you right now and I'm telling you something, and then you just are looking at your phone and like you're not president or like i just stop talking and then i'll let you talk and i won't say nothing but personally like i just <laughs> i just stop talking that's the thing people are just some people aren't real enough for that they're yeah. not real to go they're not real to dive deep and yeah. be able to have those conversations right. and that's the thing is you got to be able to have those conversations you got to be able to like and, and that's where you make bonds that's where you make relationships that's right. where real friends come into like play right it's like you find real people in your life where you can have those conversations with it's like yo listen like this is what i got going on in my life i want to hear what's going on in your life all right i'll bring that closer to the um, yeah yeah just stuff like that. And it's just like, people aren't real for that. They don't like the truth. Yeah. They'd rather be lied to or they'd rather, right. they'd rather hear some fabricated bullshit because that's going to make them feel better. Like where it's like, or if, if I'm looking at Abel right now and I'm telling Abel, yo, like this is how I feel about this, that. And it's like, yo, it's going to get better. Like some bullshit fabricated yeah. response. That's some shit that I want to hear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of like, if he's being real with me and telling me what the, like what's really up, like yeah. tell me what's up. Like yeah. and that, and that to me is like, uh, that's where my like real good friendships come into play. Right. You know what I mean? And and uh like just big shout out to my boy James, obviously yeah. James Holly went to high school with us. Uh, and my boy my buddy Col Cody Gulioso, uh Ben Maycock, Lenny Ogondo, like all those guys from Newington that are still my guys. And yeah. that that's why I can honestly sit there and be like, yo, like and obviously my brother as well. But those are my guys where I can say, like, yo, these guys are real with me. I'm acting I'm acting crazy. Um or I'm feeling some type of way or I'm feeling down for myself, they're not going to be like, yo, like, like, it's going to be fine or like, try to like, like baby me type shit. It's just more like, yo, step your shit up. Like, be real with yourself. Let's go type shit. Like, you, you got, you got something going on and you got stuff going for you. So keep, like, keep pushing, keep pressing. And that's, those are the people you want to surround yourself with. Right. And I think that's very important. Um, yeah. That, I, I think that's very important. So Me, I, I think, yeah. and, that, and that's the thing with you is I right. think that you're starting to figure out that like, and I know you got your, I know you got your, your good friend group and stuff like that that yeah. you chilled with and, and that's great for you because you finally found your people. And I'm sure, I'm sure if you think about this, I don't know about your point of view, from my point of view, if you think about the friend group that you hang out with right now, right? With all those guys that you play like PlayStation with and all the dudes yep. that I know, like, would you have thought your senior year of high school, these are the dudes you'd be friends with right now? This dumbass right here, yeah. Um, no, I'm, besides no, Abel, yeah, like, no, I know Abel. Yeah, but no, like, me, me, yeah, yeah. Not me, me and Abel go back since. 
No, but like think about it. Like like all your other boys. I know you went. I know you went to middle school and high school with these guys. Yeah, no, no. I mean, like really think about it. Okay, okay, okay. A little bit, because my brother, my brother was already best friends with this big red Al. Yeah. Shout shout to him. Um, so my brother was already best friends with him. Still is to this day. He's best friends with me. He's best friends with Abel. And the one thing I love about Al, and and then what what came with Al is came Dre. So and Dre was associated with my brother and Al. And then so that kind of uh, me and Abel and those three got got in the mix. And then that's how that group sort of started. But then me and Gavin, we go back since kindergarten. So that was. And we had a little bit of time apart because mm-hmm. in high school, like he did the cross, had the football, yeah. and what comes with football, you got to associate more with your football players and shit like that. You don't have time for anybody else. So, yes and no. Um, I definitely, I mean, it's unfortunate the way certain circumstances, but it's the way life works, man. It's the way you, life works. That's just your. Bi- yeah, I, so, so, I I hung out with with different people now. I I still talk to yeah. some of those people today. I'm cool with. And that's not what I mean. What I mean no, is no, yeah, more yeah, yeah. like the people no, yeah, that yeah, yeah. are your, no, yeah, your yeah. circle. Uh, yeah, and if I was in middle school and and like early high school, no. But after senior, like I was always on PlayStation, Word. and what came with PlayStation came with All your the boy, people yeah. for the most part. And that, yeah, and, and to go like just to say, and it's actually my friend group. I'd say no. And actually, yeah. I forget to mention my my one of my he's like my brother Tyler Fodes from Weathersfield. Um, you met him. He was I was throwing him at the yeah, field. Funny the other ass day. kid, yeah. And uh, like the all the kids that I'm friends with now are kids that I I've grown up with since I was young. So like James, like James, he moved here from he's originally from Georgia and he moved here and he I forget where he was at before. I think he was at East Hartford before Newington. He came to Newington seventh grade, and ever since me and him met, we just clicked. Like nice. it was just like one of those things where we just clicked, and. I mean, still to this day, that dude, like, you can't, blood's not going to make me and him closer. Like, he's like, I, I, I treat him like he's my mom's child. And it's like yeah. one of those things where you got him. And then it's like, I've known Maycock and Lenny since we were, like, nine years old. Yeah. Cody is, and then my buddy Cody's from Weathersfield, and he's uh he's Ben's cousin. So I, I started chilling with him, like, in my sophomore year of high school, freshman year of high school. Right. And we've been best friends since. And then Ty, me and Ty grew up together since we were six years old like legitimately six years old that dude's like my brother like and do like kid like that where it's like when i'm down like even like the past like week and a half it's like it was really good to have my boys around where like i was like real upset about my grandma and like be able to like so it it's it's kind of interesting to see that like honestly i i am kind of surprised but i'm not surprised who they are because i'm a little surprised to the fact that and don't get it twisted i got a bunch of really good friends up at school i'm just talking about my friends from home yeah um, but I, I'm kind of surprised that I even have the amount of friends that I still have now that I grew up with. Yeah. But am I surprised that these are the ones who they are? No. Right. Because I always knew that these guys are the ones that was loyal to me. They never turned me wrong. They never did. They never, you know what I mean? They never did nothing wrong to me. Never turned their back on me. And it goes to show cause I'm now 21 years old and like Lenny, Ben and Cody and them are 23, 24 years old. And then James and Ty are my age, so our age, 21. And it's like, as you get older, it's like literally six, seven, eight, ten plus years of relation, like friendships. Right. And it's like, it goes to show that, like, these are the people you want to surround yourself with. And it, honestly, yeah. and honestly, it's like, it's good to have people that you grew up with that know what you struggled, where you came from. So yeah. they can really be real with you and help you out. Because that's what you want. You want people that are real with you. And that's why, like, I already know. Like with Abel, it's like you got something going on. He gonna be there for you. Yeah, he got something going on. You gonna be there for him, and that's what it needs to be. And that's the thing that a lot of people lack is they lack that like they lack that giving back. You get what I'm saying? The like, one thing like, I love about having a real friend to the point where you're you see yourself as brothers is one time I was I don't even remember what I was doing, but I just remember Al out of nowhere just completely checked the shit out of me. And just gave me the most genuine response. There were some friends, you know, they, they just want to always say the right thing, the right thing, quote unquote, or they just want to say the thing that, like, you know you want to hear, like you said. But sometimes what you want to hear isn't what you need to hear. Exactly. And so one time, I remember, I don't remember what I w- said or was doing, but I remember Al just checked me so fucking quick. And I was like, I, I could have been, I could have started an argument right then and there. And he could attest to this. I, I should have told him that I never do that. I'm stubborn as shit. I'll debate someone until I'm blue in the face a lot of, like, not all the time, but sometimes, right? If I like, just want to, you know, get people riled up and shit. But right then and there, I said, "You're right. I appreciate your response." Like, 
You're completely right. And like, th- like there's people, there's where they constantly have to win the argument. And I still deal with that. I deal with that with my siblings and my family at times. But sometimes you just got to swallow your pride and just say, you're right. I was wrong. I remember in high school, um, I had a friend who told me something that I needed to hear, not what I wanted to hear. And I ended up not listening to their advice. And I ended up paying the price for it. And I, I told them. I told them they were right and that I was grateful for what they told me. And I'm sorry I didn't listen to their advice. But at the end of the day, you're right. I mean, who you surround yourself with, you got to surround yourself with people who show oh, have nothing but the best intentions for you. You have nothing but the best intentions for them. And you want to help each other succeed. You can't have a, a group where That's a fact. people want to wish each other to fail and they just want to be the one with to, to succeed. Like if I personally, if I were to blow up after years, days, months, weeks, whatever, I don't care. If that were to happen, like Abel, Al, Dre, whoever, my, my brother's in the military, so he's different. But but like whoever, if the right opportunity presented itself, I would have no hesitation bringing them along with me or teaching them exactly like what I did to get to where I am. Wow, and this sure. could stay and this could stay at like a plateaued pace. I mean, obviously I love doing this no matter what. I'm going to keep doing it. I love doing this. But I would and I would love to see progress, but you know, like the, I'm just trying to show people whether you're listening, watching, whether this is your first time watching or listening or not, I just want to show you guys or if you're listening, just I want you guys to listen and hear that you need to do what makes you happy. You need to follow what exactly makes you you. If you are an artist, paint, create content, share it. Don't be afraid to share what it is that makes you happy or do what you love. Because people, whether you realize it or not, people will, um, they'll show attention. The people who I least expected to, you did. Like, people who I least expected to reach out to me, reached out to me and said, what you're doing is so cool. Like that, that is so sick what you're doing. I like big, big props to you, man. Like I, I've been listening, I've been watching and it's just like, whoa. And that's only like a small amount of people compared to what it actually could be. And even then just one person, one person going another way. And, and that's all you need is one person. So if you have a friend, if, if you like to sing, if you're listening or watching, if you like to sing and you want to post videos, you sing it or go on TikTok, whatever, all you need is one friend or one person to get you in the right direction, the right path, and just follow your gut. All you need is that one opportunity. Yeah, most time, most times that we're, your gut feeling, you should follow it. I mean, unless it's something really bad, don't do it. But if your gut is telling you to do something that you're scared to do, but it could potentially have more good than bad, then do it. And if it doesn't work out, don't be afraid to get back on the horse and try again. And, that, and that's failing why I- is okay. <laughs> failing is a way to eventually succeed. That like it's that you can't succeed without failing. You just can't unless you're you were born. And a rich family are born in the best possible circumstances where you have nothing but the assets, time, and money, or whatever to do what you want and do what you please. Aside, you know, good for them, for good for those families or whoever's in that predicament. But if you have to start from the bottom and you want to make it doing certain things or be successful in life, I think everybody in life wants to be successful in some sort of way. I, I don't think everybody wants to be famous because famous and success are two different things. Right. So I think if you want to. Be successful in life, you know. You just got to do and find the things that you're good at. Do what makes you happy and never be afraid to try. Because I, my very first episode did not go how I wanted, but because I'm having on the guests that I want on, I'm talking to the right people and knowing how I am. And I'm showing humility, and I've even said this. If today this all had to be scrapped up because the podcast was just not working out, I mean, I don't plan on doing it anytime soon, but if I had to scrap it and just stop, just because I want to stop and try something completely different, I would have no shame doing that because I'm not afraid to fail and I'm not afraid to and that's, show that it's okay. And that's, that's like, at least I'm trying. You know what I mean? There's people out there that are just watching. Some people could say, I hope he fails. I hope this podcast eventually sucks. Like, like, the, like there probably like, is yeah. people there. Yeah, no, there probably is. And you know what? Like, I, I don't, I'm There's not always gonna, gonna be haters. Yeah, you can't and I'm everybody. okay with that. I'm I'm okay with that. I just hope that you know you're doing what you have to do on your other side of things. But you know, at least I'm showing that it's okay to try and it's okay to be who you want. And even I have like 30 something subscribers on YouTube. I don't give a shit. It could be 25 tomorrow. I'm still gonna do this, and I'm still gonna have people who think it's cool and support it. That's not gonna change me. And I know in my heart, I'm still gonna find the people that that I can have on. And I do have people that I'm gonna have yeah. on, like you said. So. 
I mean, I mean, never look, yeah. never be afraid to fail. Be afraid to be mediocre. Yeah. Like, and that's why I can commend you. And I respect it. That yeah. I know, like, obviously you want this to go to a place yeah. above where you're at. Yeah. But I can definitely commend you to say that, like, you're doing this out of love and passion, uh, rather than doing this for some clout and doing this to be famous. You right. know what I mean? And, I think you're actually doing something that you really enjoy, and it's gonna probably yeah. pop up, bro. We're gonna have to see. Yeah, we're gonna have to see what happens from there for sure. And that'd be crazy. And and I promise. I mean, if that day ever comes, I mean, I'm a very one of my phobias is claustrophobia. So the <laughs> whole dog. So the whole. So you ever see? Um, my perfect example of that is you remember when uh, Stefan Diggs had that the Minnesota or Minneapolis miracle. Yeah. And he he ran like sixty yards, threw off his helmet, and everybody dog piled on top of him. The one thing I was thinking is, how was he able to breathe or not suffocate? <laughs> if I were to if I were to have had a game winning play and like and a sport or whatever, I would have told people. I would even tell them before, like like do not go near me. Like I'm don't dog pile on top of me. I had people dog pile on top of me once just just to fuck with me like a year ago, and I almost like spazzed the fuck out. Like seriously, because I don't like that. I don't. I don't like. I mean, You're I think what. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, because my back was fucked up. Yeah, after football, I just stopped, like, stretching and lifting. And my back, I had a couple of dislocated discs. That's crazy. Yeah, which which is, like, pra- they're practically, like, sort of back where they need to be. I just need to work on my core and back. But, like, I've been stretching and doing what I had to do, so, like, it's nowhere near what it once was. But, but yeah, shit is crazy, man. And I promise that if this shit, if and when, you know, shit changes, you know, things go in my favor... You know, I, I I would have no problem telling people what exactly I did to change my life around, to do what it is I needed, the right steps I needed to take to, you know, and, and I would always be myself at the end of the day. I wouldn't want to become someone who falls into the, like, the, the, the group of where, like, that's not really him. Like, he's putting on a face for the camera right now. Yeah. My goal would be to not do that. I mean, if all of a sudden so, somebody, like, Jimmy Fallon wanted me on. I mean, I I would doubt that, but you know what I mean. Like a show like that said, Mario, we wanted you on to start your own talk show. I and mean, obviously, you can't swear all the time, and you have to have certain procedures, certain protocols, or whatever. You know, that's the, I think that's a little different. But you know, like that'd be sick. Like I'd be open to that. Are you kidding me? Imagine you see like like Malave tonight, and then it's like I'm having on fucking. I don't know, fucking Justin Bieber is a fucking well, talk show guy. You're doing this for a reason. So yeah. it's like when you're doing this for a reason, it's like even if yeah. even if you don't out of thirty subscribers, thirty subscribers, wherever you have, even if you're not helping twenty nine of them, you're helping that one person. Well, it's still worth it, right. you know what I mean? That's the and thing it's crazy. Life. Like, let's talk about it this way because obviously we want to think big picture here. Thirty subscribers, that's a fucking classroom. Okay, that's a lot of people. Imagine being in the class and having a public give a presentation on the board and everybody's looking at you. That's how I see. That's a lot of people. You know, I could see. Obviously, I wanted to keep you know going up and up and up. And if you want to like, subscribe, you know, share, whatever. <laughs> I'm not plugging that real quick. No, but seriously, like, I, like that matters. Like, I I appreciate that. Please, if you're if you um aren't listening on YouTube, like, please don't be afraid to go to YouTube, like, subscribe. Like, it, it genuinely helps. And I got ideas in terms of other content I want to create and certain paths I can take. I'm still starting off. I, I got to get the sound clip thing down. I'm learning how to edit. Like, like starting today, I'm going to start um, learning how to edit because I just got this app and I'm going to start working on that. But yeah, like, I mean, like I said, not afraid to fail. And I know that no matter what, like, it's only going to go up unless I did something completely bad to the point where everyone was talking to where it just can be just nothing but negative because people, the public sees me as this demonic figure. But see, you, you got this good idea of, right. like, this conversation is real. It's yeah. not like, it's not, like, you, you're you're bringing people on to have real conversations with them. You're not, you're not, like, you're not over here. Not, and I can tell, I can tell the viewers this right now. He's not over here writing questions down on his paper and pad. Like, he had no questions for me. Yep. None of that. It was, it's a real conversation. It's just how, how things flow between two people and just understanding what's real, what's going through your life, what's going through the person sitting across from you's yeah. life. What do they got going on? What goals do they have set? What certain things are going on with them? And I think you got a great idea built around it already. So it's like you got a real conversation. You got a vibe. You got your man cave. You got the people that you want on. And that's the thing. You're trying to get people on you, the, the people that you want. Yeah. And you continue to do this, it's going to soar. The and I, and, I, and I even told you, it's crazy because I told you, Right before I said the cam the the mic thing goes away, didn't it? Yeah, because like, because yeah. the first few minutes like you, 
you know, like you, you, like you, you were obviously talking and and you know, like responding to questions, but then all of a sudden, as soon as it took over, like this, like I, like I'm not paying attention to this. Like me, Nash, if you see me moving the mic like this, like, that's just me, like making sure. Yeah. Because, because I can see the audio thing in terms of like how loud like the volume is projecting, but other than that, it just goes away. Even whether whether you naturally do this all the time or you don't, the mic aspect goes away, and and I think that the real conversation happens and um yeah i think this conversation was too good to not let it get sour to the point we've we've even talked about this so um before we end this is there anything you want to say any more like anything more you want to talk about um or just yeah before before we get you going because i mean it's christmas eve no so i mean the last thing i just really want to say is uh i mean obviously i appreciate you for having me on um, just to like, and, and this is just something that <laughs> it's kind of funny that Mario actually kind of convinced me for this. Um, uh, it was just a good idea to just like kind of open up and just show people who I really am and, yeah. um, just be able to even help a few people out there. So it's like, even if you're out there and you're struggling with something and there's something going on in your life, whether it's mental health, uh, loss of a loved one, um, you're not too, doing too well in school or there's always going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. Right. Um, like I said sure. before, darkness is never going to drive out the darkness. Only the light is going to do that. So until you see the light, um, it's going to be hard to get better. But every single person is going to be able to get better. It and, does. Um, it, it gets better. I'm telling you, I'm, it does. I'm telling you as, it hard does. As, it, as hard as the past seems, um, every day it does get better. And um, I mean, I just want people to know that like, if you want to be great, you could be great. You could be great at anything. I mean, um, it, all it takes is hard work, determination, and just putting in good effort. You put in great effort, whatever you do, whether it's uh, in the gym, on the field, in the classroom, right. um, at work, in the office, uh, doing a podcast, singing, dancing, whatever you do, just put in the work and keep yeah. keep trying. And uh, I, like I'm like I said, uh, the best the best point to be in your life uh, is to find that peace, find that peace and tranquility, where it's right. like you're able to just be happy with what's going on. Nothing bothers you. Nothing affects you. And uh, it just it, it and it sounds funny, but it's like you're just like it's kind of like you're just floating, like you're there, like it's like you're just in that like you're in that good mood, and you're just you're being able to just be at peace of mind. And um, I think that uh, I think what you're doing is a really good thing. And um, I very again, I'm very 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 appreciative that uh, you wanted to have me on. And uh, I hope this uh, I hope this definitely can uh, help get your podcast along and uh, benefit yeah. benefit you in most ways. And uh, I want you guys to tune in. Mario's got a few few people coming up. Um, it's gonna be good. Um, and also tune in. Uh, Delphi season starting February twenty eighth. Um, we're gonna have a good year. We got our whole team coming back. Definitely tune in. We'll be. Uh, I think we'll be at. Um, I think we're at Southern Connecticut this year. So if anybody wants to come, uh, check the schedule out. We'll be at Southern Connecticut. Um, but yeah, uh, I appreciate the love. I appreciate everybody. Uh, who shows love to me, whether you, uh, whether I see it from you or not, or I get a text or anything, any of that. But mm-hmm. uh, I definitely appreciate the love because I know I can feel it, and I know there's some love going around. And uh, I definitely appreciate you having me on, bro, for sure. Very well said. Very well said indeed. Um, I will. Everyone will know when this episode is definitely released. Sure. I wish you all nothing but the merriest of Christmases. The happiest of holidays. If this comes out after New Year's, Happy New Year's. For sure. Um, happy uh, happy yeah. New Year's. Yep. Merry Christmas. Everything. Everything. Merry Seriously, Christmas yeah. Eve. My love is with you all. God bless you all. And, uh, yeah, everyone have a good one, all right? Shout Take out care. the fudge effect. <laughs>